Hi, all. I'm Dan Smegrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, February 25th, 2021, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today. Captured 3D, we're going to be talking about do-it-yourself Matterport virtual staging powered by Captured 3D. We're going to be talking about augmented reality meets Matterport, and uh, we have absolutely the perfect subject matter expert to talk to us today, Stephen Kunis. Hey, Stephen, good to see you again. Likewise. Thanks for having me. You bet. Stephen's been on our show a number of times. He is Foria co-founder, chief operating officer, and Foria is the parent company of Captured 3D. Uh, first, Stephen, you have an amazing platform, Captured 3D. Before we jump into virtual staging, before we jump into augmented reality, how about for those that haven't watched the five other shows that you were on talking about each aspect of Captured, how about giving us a, just a big picture overview of the Captured platform? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, thanks for having me on and really excited to share some exciting news. Um, as you mentioned, we've done a few of these in the past, going through different parts of the platform, and we're constantly developing and adding to the feature suites that we have there. So as a really brief background, uh, we started Captured back in 2015, so now almost six years ago, um, when we were just using the system for ourselves. We had grown a Matterport network of over 15 technicians here in Australia and New Zealand. Um, Matterport came to us and asked us to become the reseller and distributor for Australia and New Zealand. And that's when we decided to turn our software platform into a forward-facing tool that anyone um, can make use of. And primarily to begin with, it was a booking um, and scheduling tool. That's what we were using it for. And since then, we've been building out a number of different features. Uh, a lot of our customers would know us for our fantastic floor plans. So we do complete customized floor plans. Uh, you can upload a design that you would like us to replicate. Um, it could be a site plan, a floor plan, even a 3D plan. We've actually got a promotion on right now. Order any 3D plan and you'll get a free 2D plan. Um, absolutely complimentary of that. Uh, the secondary features are more around the virtual tour and the experience behind it so our virtual tour branding um, our branding bars our logos our link backs our client contact information all within the branding bars um, and also the analytics that track behind it so heat map analytics and scheduling those to send out to clients um, in addition to this once you get all these pieces together you can put it together in a one-page website we'll be going through an um, update later in the show around some of the fantastic new experiences that our developers have created recently um, some beautiful property um, one-page property websites um, and helping you manage everything as well. We do have um, a back-end system for post-production. So the ideal outcome is that you're so busy scanning that you don't have time to do your highlight reel, your photo extraction, your start points, and we're here to help. Um, we've got over five years of experience in doing post-production in all sorts of different experiences, be it real estate, uh, commercial, um, um, sorry, retail, or even museums. So our team can automatically create your highlight reels for you and extract your photos um, and then the, the finishing piece to that puzzle is once you've got your photos, if you needed to do photo retouching, our system's there in place for you to do that. Simple little click, order that photo retouching and it's back to you within a few hours. Um, outside of that, one of the other pieces that we did speak about last time we were on the show was our client portal. So um, collaborator accesses are limited on Matterport. So what we've provided our customers is a branded portal that they can send their clients. And so it looks like their um, company portal. When you log in, you see all of the uh, tours and experiences associated to a particular client. Uh, again, we'll be going through a little bit of that uh, today, right at the end in some updates that we've got um, going on. And finally, once you've got all that content, we've got our delivery email system. So packaging it all up with your logos um, and pack, um, zipping up all the photos, the floor plans and the virtual tours and sending that through uh, in a really simple way uh, to deliver the content. And that is us in a nutshell with a number of exciting features to come as well. Yeah, that, that's an awesome uh, uh, summary, high-level summary for Captured. Uh, before we jump into uh, do-it-yourself Matterport virtual staging, before we jump into um, the augmented reality uh, from Captured 3D, uh, I think you have some additional news that you'd like to share with WGA and TV viewers. Yeah, so this is just in rela relation to updating the UI and UX of the platform. So with all of these new features coming in, um, we needed a really simple way to host them and allow our customers to make the um, best use out of it. When we initially created the system or platform, uh, there was only a few features there. And so we could be a little bit more liberal with where things were on the page. Our design and development team have taken the time to do a lot of research and to understand how best we can serve a lot of this 
um, to our clientele uh, to make the most out of what's to come as well into the future. And I might be able to give some indications around some even further future features and what we're preparing for when you have a look at this new design. Um, I can quickly give you an example if you'd like and run you through the page. Um, sure, that'd be jump. great. <clears throat> sure, and while, while Stephen's getting set for the page, uh, I'm gonna suggest to get to the page use the WGAN affiliate link because that will get you six free captured floor plans and that will get you six free uh, captured site plans. It's WGAN.info forward slash captured C-A-P-T-U-R-3-D. WGAN.info forward slash captured, that's C-A-P-T-U-R-3-D. And then, uh, uh, let's see, it looks like we are uh, on the back end of your of the content management system for Captured. Uh, so you can see my page here? Yep. Fantastic. So this is the back end. This is where you do all the creating. Um, if anyone that's seen the system before, it used to be one single page for your property and uh, it used to go on forever with everything kind of just placed in different areas. Uh, what we've done is broken it up into five key areas that you can see across the top here. So everything to do with your virtual tour, and we'll go through this in depth in a moment. Your assets, again, we'll go through it. And so that's more of the auxiliary assets that complement the virtual tour, things like floor plans, photos, videos, and the like. Uh, the website, um, we will go through this in a really quick example of what's happened there in the future. Um, AR Connect, a part that we'll go into as well later, analytics and info. I'll go through each of these really quickly, um, but we'll start here on the property page. The key thing that you can see now and something that we didn't have before is the live demo um, to allow you to see all the changes that you're making as you're making them. So without having to go back and forth, here is an example piece that we've just put together. Um, I can quickly get to the links or the embed codes that I need to change. Um, and I can see that I've got my branding bar and everything set um, within this space here. And so this is kind of just like the landing page and gives you an area to kind of uh, edit maybe your title of the tour or anything that you may um, need fit. So if I was to just edit, let's call this our test. And quickly save that. It's gonna bring it back up and show me that the test has been done. And so it's constantly updating with that video there as well um, on all the changes that we've made. Which is very cool that you enable the, the playing of video within the tour without leaving the tour. Yes, exactly right. That's one of our embeds. And so it actually leads us on to the next part really well, which is the overlay. Um, all of these features were previously stuck within a little edit button on our last design. And now it's kind of been brought out to give you a much better example. So you can see your client, which is your branding bar and also links back to them. Uh, the contact information. So you can have the real estate agents um, images like um, you can see here, or even potentially another logo or option for them to book with their emails as well. Being able to change where, what kind of branding type you want. So it can have, um, we have the sidebar, which is the one that you saw on the previous page. You can have a burger menu. And so that's what it looks like on this part here all of your information inside in there or even no branding bar as well um, and top or bottom being able to change it back and forth all of these features were existing in the previous platform but now they're a little bit more forward facing and allow allows you to kind of edit a little bit more the navigation menu this is something that we've been through before on um, one of our earlier discussions uh, but this is where you can put in deep links to different parts of the tour or even separate tours all together um, by simply adding as many as you like works really well for duplexes or where there's two properties on the same piece um, or making a really simple navigation with deep links like you can see here. Um, and the parts over here, just adding the media, what you saw before is that video. And so this is the mini video that plays in the bottom right hand corner when the uh, experience loads. We also have the full screen video that you can have as a pre-roll. And so yeah, before I, the tour starts. Uh, for, forgive me, I think I would just add Stephen, for, for, for those uh, Matterport service providers that are somewhat new to capture is, is to understand that one of the great features of Captured is the overlay of Matterport. Uh, might think of it as, it as a skin. So Stephen is is uh, has the option of what logo is going to go on top of the skin and which agent's going to get contacted on that single property website. And uh, so all of that is happening in the back end of captured in the content management system, uh, including uh, uh, adding videos. That's correct. Um, absolutely correct. Yeah. And once you do this once and you can set it up for a client, it automatically brings it in for the next time you use that client. And so uh, we have this philosophy of do once, um, create many, and then you can edit things uh, along the way as well. Um, 
with the video, the mini one is what you saw a moment ago. The full screen plays a video before the tour starts. Uh, a lot of our drone operators that use our system like to use this to create a drone fly-in um, to the starting point of the tour and have a nice little transition. It's a really nice way of entering a property and giving an oversight to it. And the last one here is the password protection. Um, very similar to Matterports. Um, they brought theirs out recently, but this has a username and password that's associated to it if you would like to use it. Um, we have spoken about this before, so I don't want to go in too much depth into this. There are some fantastic videos that we've done here. And the last one's the URL parameters. Um, Everything's just on a tick box. And so these are all the URL parameters that you can see or make use out of from Matterport, usually by adding uh, parameters at the back end of the URL. Uh, our system allows you to just easily toggle them on and off and it will automatically do it, keeping the URL clean and free yeah. of any of the parameters. And, and for, for a Matterport service provider, they've never even heard the expression URL parameter. What's an example of the kinds of things that can be controlled from ticking on and off from this page? So um, one of the clear examples is the highlight rule. And so you may, might want to turn off your highlight rule in the forward facing version. And so by turning it off, it won't show. So it won't pop up um, in that piece. The other one is the about panel. Um, on default, we turn it off because we've got the branding bar with all that information. You could easily turn that on. So the about panel is the top left-hand corner of Matterport that has the address and the contact information because we do a reuse of that information within our sidebars and things. On default, we have that turned off. You can also change the languages um, and also the transition times within your highlight reel or, or walkthrough as well. And the last one here, and we'll go through this um, a bit later. And part of the reason why we've done a redesign is the virtual staging beta. Um, I won't go into this now because we are gonna speak about it a little bit more later. So I'll move on to the asset side. Um, here, there's, this is just another rework and making things easier uh, for our customers to make use out of. So nice big pictures of our floor plans that you can see here. I'll just click on that so you can see. This is one of our standards floor and site plans that you can get from a Matterport tour. Um, all of the photos have been extracted from the Matterport tour. Um, we talked about at the top of the show being able to order photo retouching. So if I was to click on this, I could pick a number of photos to get retouched, whether it's the color brightness, um, add in any notes that I would like and submit that order. All of these tours, um, sorry, all of these photos will be delivered back within six to 12 hours. And so rapid uh, turnaround times. You can also do object removal. If you accidentally caught uh, the house pet within a shot um, and you want to get that removed, that's a really easy job for us to do. Or even uh, the Matterport camera in the, in the view oh. of the bathroom. So you, you have a beautiful shot of the bathroom, but your camera's in it. Absolutely, yeah. That's one of the biggest ones that we see. Um, and the video part here is well, quite simple. Uh, the next part here is another reason why we made the uh, major update is our website. And so we've got all of the content that we've been through recently, the photos, the floor plans, um, and any of the videos that we'd like to show. And what we're producing here is that forward facing one page property website. So, um, if I was to just add some information in here for the bedrooms and bathrooms, and car spaces, just so we've got some information. And let's say the price is a million dollars. Testing out. I'm just going to save that there. Um, and we can bring in that video really simply. It's all automated and connected through. So I can bring that video in um, to the property website. And if we had any downloadable links, so it could be the um, document for the property or anything else, we could add that into this section here. And automatically it's generating a property website. There will be a video playing, so apologies. Let me just pause that. There we go. Um, so all the pieces that we've just been playing with are now beautifully put together in a one-page website. Um, that works on mobile and desktop, the testing out parts there, the information that we put um, previously, it's pulling through all the um, information automatically so that you don't have to sit there and work um, putting it all together. The key part- And, and, uh, and the single toggle for whether you wanted a branded link or an unbranded link for MLS. That's correct. Um, this is one of the bigger um, questions that were being asked from the US customers around MLS compliance. And so now we have um, both links available uh, depending on how you would like to see it. And so this is um, allowing you to create an unbranded link that will be approved by all MLS services. The 
the key part that we've updated here um, in the recent months is our ability to create templates. So we'd always provided a number of templates that you could easily put together. And you can see that our team have done a lot of tests here, um, but we can now allow our customers to build their own templates. And this is uh, a really amazing feature. I liken it to um, MailChimp. If you've ever used MailChimp to send out EDMs, you can place items in different areas within your email and then send that out. It's the same um, thing here. So if I was to just duplicate, this was the um, example that we're on and we'll just put our, um, our name in this. It's opening up our editing tool. Um, and straight away you can see, you can choose the different layouts for each column. So you could have one, two, three, um, or even these uh, broken up ones, which is one third, two thirds or different designs within each section. So if I was to click on a section and let's say I wanted to bring the floor plan um, up because I want that to be the hero of the website. That's how I can change it quite simply. Even changing it within that space, I can just delete that and turn that into um, our documents, for instance. Uh, it's really simple to just change things and bring them forward and backwards or even add new pieces. So. Um, if I wanted to add a two thirds, one third column, it brings it up automatically. I can bring that down here. Um, I can turn this into a video and let's add the map on this side here. All the options there are available. You can have as many things on this page as you like. Um, something that we've been bringing in recently, which we've had great success within the insurance industry for anyone doing claim adjusting out there um, is the new comments section. Um, it usually sits at the bottom of a page. So I'll just bring it down here. This new section, submit a report, allows people to upload any attachments that they would like. So it could be a electrician's report or a plumber's report, um, put in their information um, and then save that and submit. And so you've got a running report tally for anything that may be going on within that space. And so I've played around with this a fair bit. If I click save, we're all good to go. So if two questions up. while we're waiting yep. for that to come up. Uh, so if I don't have a Matterport tour, perhaps I just have a, a video or a floor plan, I presume one of the options would be no virtual tour. Yep, correct. So um, in this modal here, you can see that the virtual tour is there. I can simply just delete that. And then you've got a page that has the photos, the floor plans, the videos, anything else that you'd like to add, and it won't have a virtual tour on it. That's all, all completely possible. And can one of the content boxes support iframe? It's a really good question. So we're um, updating the system to support iframe uh, in the next couple months before the middle of the year. At the moment, the way that we're, um, besides videos from YouTube that can be embedded automatically, um, it's through the links section of our um, piece. And so I think I may have removed it. No, just here. And so you can add a link to something, um, but it's not iframe within this space, but that's a really good point. And we'll be updating that very shortly. So in, in 2021, we could expect that Captured would support uh, iframe as one of the content uh, boxes. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, awesome. If I come back and I'll just refresh this page. Um, it's probably gonna look a little bit weird because I was just playing around with different boxes in that piece, but this is the, um, I gotta choose the right template that we created, which was the We Get Around test. So now when it's opened up, uh, we've got this opening that we had there. Now I've got that video that I placed on the right hand side and the map, um, thankfully it is. We've got two maps because I was playing around with it so much. Um, and then if we keep going down, just want to show the expression box. Here we go. So the video is at the bottom and then the submit area for a report. So I can put my name information, upload an attachment. Um, And if I submit that report, <clears throat> it now sits below. And so from an insurance point of view or claim adjusting point of view, this becomes a running tally for all the information that you need to see and, there. And where is that going? So all of these attachment, attachments and information is, is then saved um, on your virtual tour area within the website in the documents. And so I didn't upload any documents, so you won't see it in this area. And so you've just got the text sitting on the uh, website. But it's saved in the content management system or is it saved in the actual uh, single property website that anyone can see? Uh, it's saved in the property website. And so the electrician can see what the plumber's doing, um, but you can also password protect this page. So it is secure as well. And so for those purposes, 
This page is usually secured by a password um, if you're adding in this content section at the bottom. Awesome. So if it's a fire or flood damage and all the different trades are working on a property, maybe a general contractor, the, the, the trades, mm -hmm. uh, anyone that wants to make annotations to the space can, and it's visible to all on the front end, and then typically you would passport protect that. And I would imagine that particular content uh, box, you have a choice of whether to include that reports feature or not. That's correct. Yeah, it's all um, up to you and how you want to use the system. And that's what we've tried to create here, a flexible system that you can manipulate how you like to get the services that you require. Um, like you mentioned, you could do pages without any tours or any no photos, um, whatever you see fit. Uh, you can create the unlimited number of um, templates depending on your client's needs and wants for this instance in itself. Yeah, that, that's, that's awesome, Stephen. I think last time we visited, here's the template. And uh, you're, obviously your development team has been very busy to enable the flexibility to organize uh, the content in a way that is appropriate either for that Matterport service provider or Matterport service provider for their client. Yeah, exactly right. We've had the Matterport service provider in the front of our mind and how we can help them become uh, a bigger and better business uh, as we always have. So they're the first three tabs there for those areas. Um, the next one is the AR Connect. Um, <clears throat> I've got some examples of this later on in the show today. Uh, again, another big reason why we did do this update is to help house this um, experience and um, creation of it. And the last two here, um, are pieces that we all would have seen before in the previous shows, but the analytics page got a little bit of a refresh. So now you can see the analytics from the virtual tour um, or the website, depending on what you want to have a look at. This is just generating, so give it a second. Um, the reports, um, and so you can I'll let that load up. And this may be an aha moment for many Matterport service providers looking at this page because the, the Matterport analytics is somewhat limited through Matterport. Well, it turns out there's a lot of information that Captured is able to uh, generate in terms of analytics and enable the Matterport service provider to share that those reports back to the client. That's correct. Um, and so the first part, and you would say, and I should have chosen a better example with the um, actual analytics in it. This is our testing one, but we have our daily usages, um, the number of times people have engaged, um, whether it's a call or email button or the leads. Steve, do you want to take a moment, just call up one of the a robust reports so we actually see the charts, diagrams, data? I'll stop sharing and just find one in the database. Yeah, okay. So the, the, the captured analytics feature is awesome uh, in that there is so much information available to be able to share with clients. And you can also schedule when you want your report sent to the client. So you can automate the reports that come from you with your branding to your client. Uh, and, um, you know, if you've ever had clients ask, well, okay, how many people are, you know, visiting and, you know, and, and what are they looking at within the tour? Is there, are they looking in the living room mostly? They're looking in the outdoors? So back to you. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, and so now you can see the actual analytics being tracked within this tour. Um, it's looking at a one week range. You can change this depending on what you want to have a look at. So all time, fortnight, month or weekly. Um, this is daily users or interactions or, um, sorry, visits per that day. And you can see here the number of people who've clicked the call button. And so when we're looking at the one page website and virtual tour, those buttons at the bottom right hand corner, how many people have emailed and the leads that have been generated because of it. With, and that's because you've selected the report for a week. So you could have selected it for, uh, all, for all time and have all those analytics now start to repopulate based on that. Correct. So it's going to probably take a second um, to generate all of that because I think this tour has been live for a while. Um, but as that's loading through, so you, go, um, you can see that it's had quite a lot of emails and calls. It's the um, This is the property that sits on our website, but it shows quite a lot of the data that's being generated here. Um, these first parts page visits is something that Matterport do provide, but obviously not the graph. The next one's down, uh, total views, total users and average time split up by the referrer. Um, and so for those of you who may not be as aware of what a referrer is, it's where the individuals come before coming to the virtual tour. The importance of this is you can understand um, a user journey or potentially what um, websites 
are getting you more traffic for your virtual tours. If it's a property website or a client's website, um, you can see here direct is the biggest one for this because it sits directly on our forward facing website. Um, the We Get Around Forum is the second biggest one, which is great to see getting a lot of traction through that space. Um, captured.io, so again, through our website there. And then Pinterest is getting a fair bit of um, views. And you can see it broken down for each one of these, um, the average time, the total users. And you can see um, here in terms of the total number of referrers um, within this timescape. The last part here is the heat map. Um, we are doing some updates to this heat map, but what we can see at the bottom here is blue to, from cold, red to hot. And so um, each time a user visits a website, we're tracking exactly where they're moving within that space. Um, and so red represents 80 to 100% of users. And so this will usually be your starting location where people always start. This spot is always going to be red because that's how you get into the experience. And then working down in 20% increments um, to the colors. So you can see, uh, again, this is our forward facing website. So people are staying within that main living area and not really venturing too far out um, from that tour in this example itself. So it's a nice in-depth um, report. And what you are mentioning when I was loading this up is actually scheduling a report. So you can schedule as many reports as possible. This is a, a time saver like nothing else. You don't have to worry about every week sending an email report to a hundred different clients. This will automatically do it for you. Um, and so you can set up the different information for the people that you'd like to send it to. You could have daily reports, weekly reports, um, monthly reports, or even yearly reports. And you can create as many of these per property and have them automatically scheduled out. It's a great way to stay front of mind with your clients without actually having to do anything. And the last one here is the lead generation. So um, in those forms where we were collecting information, we can now see all of the leads that have been generated, the contact details and the notes that they have left in this space. Um, and the last but not least on this new update is the info page. Um, and so any booking information that may have come through for the client and technician who are running it um, and the client and property information, it's just a nicer way to host this information online. Um, all of this information is used across all the other pieces, um, whether it's for the property page, the virtual tour. And so we've decided to house it in its own little spot there. Um, and so this is the new virtual uh, property pages updates. The main reasons are for a AR Connect, the website, and then also all the new features to come on virtual tour, um, which you'll start seeing come down this right hand banner um, on the side here. But that is the virtual tour update. Um, for now. Did, 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 before we jump into virtual tour, uh, excuse me, virtual staging, do it yourself, virtual staging of Matterport spaces. Did you want to talk about uh, content delivery emails? Yes, thank you for reminding me. Um, the one last piece, I'm just going to share my screen one last time. The delivery email. Um, and so this was an existing feature. Again, we've just rehoused it. We are doing a lot of work on updating this. And so by clicking on deliver, um, you're going to package up. And this one's on our website. And so it's got our logo on it. Um, but this would be your company logo. And these colors would be your branding colors, um, be it blue, red, black, whatever it may be. Um, and you're able to edit the text message that you could send. And so you can see... As I change that text, the text in the email also changes. And so you could write a, um, a detailed message to your client. And you're gonna see it pop up here. Adding all of the information. If you had clients already associated to this booking, you can easily add their email into it um, and add as many as you like as well. Um, if you would like to make them CCC or BCC as well, it's very simple to do so. Uh, and as you go down here, we've linked up every asset that you've created and put into this property page. So your virtual tour, uh, your photos, your floor plans, and it brings out a nice image of the floor plans to give something rich to the email itself and all the different formats that have been generated for that floor plan, depending if you've had multiple created. Uh, the website link, um, the branded and the unbranded because we were creating both there. So MLS approved and the standard branded um, option. And that's all packaged up automatically. And, and so all you need to do is set, click send. Hopefully so I noticed nice. there were two different kinds of buttons there. There was a view button and a delivery button. So I'll go back to that. So the view and the download. View and download. Two. So I, I could imagine that that download is associated with a, a payment link? So um, the view is associated to any URLs. And so you're viewing something online. The download yes. buttons are associated to items of um, assets. So photos or floor plans that you would want to download that aren't sitting on the, um, on the internet. And, and so and view again is the website. And so these are URLs that you would be viewing online. 
um, and download. Yes. Uh, what I'm trying to understand, Stephen, is on that download, uh, can I collect payment at the time that they download? No, so this is a zipped up file for the assets being um, right. created. The uh, assumption here would be that payment would have already been collected. If you are using our booking and scheduling tool, um, which again, we've gone through in a uh, separate episode, you can actually collect payment on the booking. Um, and so up front, and we hold that in escrow until the deliverer of the content's gone through and then the money is automatically transferred across. Uh, okay, awesome. Uh, do it yourself, virtual staging of a Matterport space. Yeah, really excited about this one. Um, this has been a long time coming. Our developers have been working for the last six months in creating a fantastic virtual staging engine. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, competition in this space because it is such a highly sought after feature. Um, our team have been working um, with our broader team within our VR and AR uh, studios company within Foria, uh, making some of the best experiences in the world. We won best AR experience uh, two years ago for Rewild, an um, experience we did with Netflix and Google. Um, and we've been bringing that expertise into our Matterport staging for compression of assets, for lighting, for um, shadows. And our web development team have been absorbing all this information like sponges and being able to produce some pretty amazing results uh, within the tour. The, the three key pieces that we adhere ourselves to um, is creating delight, simplicity, and making sure that everything just works. So um, when we're developing something, these are the key features or key areas that we're looking at. Um, we want to be able to delight both our customers and their customers. Um, it just needs to work. Um, if these experiences don't work, even in the slightest, uh, people get hesitant from wanting to come back and try it again. And simplicity. Um, with the technology that we're using, there is a lot of complexity around the back ends of how we can do things. And so trying to make things as simple as possible that anyone can make use out of is really, really important. Um, I've got a couple of videos that I can share just to show what it is that we've created here. But um, you would have seen many times before, there was some other companies that were doing similar things like Rumi a couple of years ago, uh, but that was all very human resource intensive where they had to go into each panorama um, and create the uh, Photoshop of the asset and put it in and then place it back into the tour. What this does, it creates, um, allows you to put a 3D asset directly into the Matterport model that you can then view in first person view, um, dollhouse or in the floor plan as well. Uh, to begin with, uh, our virtual staging engine went into beta on Monday. Uh, and this is going to be a world first exploration of this technology. And so I'm really excited to share this with you on your show today here, Dan. Um, a reminder, it is in beta. It's going to take a couple months to get it perfect and out there and polished. And so um, we are looking for feedback across the board. And we've already had some amazing feedback in this first week. But uh, we've launched with a few hundred assets that you can test and play with. And you can already start selling this to your clients if you see fit. I'm just going to get a video up. Yeah, on so I imagine an asset means furniture. Correct. Um, for now, it does mean a furniture. I've got a couple surprises um, in a second that you can do things without furniture as well, depending if you're in a creative space as well. But uh, we're focused to begin with on residential property. Um, our next key focus will be within the commercial space. Uh, some of the feedback that we've got already is having uh, furniture that is curated per location. And so I could imagine that houses in Australia are going to be furnished very differently to houses over in Europe or London or in the US. Um, and even within the US, I imagine houses are going to be furnished differently from the East Coast to the West Coast um, into the Midwest as well. And so being able to have a large curated pool of assets that are compressed and high quality, is going to be very important to us. But in the meantime, we've got ability for our customers to upload any of their 3D asset furnitures. And so um, if you were to download or purchase assets online yourself, you could upload them into our system to make use of. And yours would be a unique experience with no assets like it. Um, so give me a quick cool. second. While you're setting up there, again, for our viewers that would like to participate in the captured uh, do-it-yourself virtual staging of a Matterport space during this beta period, still set up a captured account by going to wgan.info forward slash captured, C-A-P-T-U-R 3-D, that's the number 3-D. And when you sign up, you'll automatically get six free floor plans, six free site plans as a viewer of WGAN TV Live at Five. Um, uh, Steven, you ready to share your screen? Yep, let's jump into it. So this is a video that we've created previously. Um, I will do a live demonstration in a little bit. 
Uh, but here's a quick overview of the virtual staging. I'll talk over this video as it's playing, giving you a bit, good understanding of what's going on here. So what you're looking at here is the Matterport model with assets already within the space. Um, as you can see, it cleared quite easily. Um, here, the individual that's doing this video has searched table, as you can see in the asset pool, being able to place that asset and move it, uh, depending on where you want to exactly place it into the space. There's a number of different ways that you can manipulate an asset as well. And we'll go through that in a little bit. Um, we've got all of the necessary assets to stage an entire property, uh, as you'll see as this video goes on from artwork, from uh, plants to be able to put inside, beds and everything that you would expect as well. Um, being able to simply search each asset class has a number of different assets per its space. Um, when you click on an asset, a green box will pop up as you can see there to show you how big that asset is within that area to allow you to place it uh, initially within a really good spot there. And the last one here that they're gonna place down is a sofa. Um, and so just picking any generic sofa and placing it in, you'll notice that when the assets placed, it has a uh, dark texture to it. Um, what that is, is a compressed version of the asset to allow you to move it easier. And then when you click off the asset, um, it goes back to its full, fully rendered piece. It is still at a compressed version in the editor compared to the forward facing view. What we're seeing here is, um, and I might just pause it quickly, is the adjusting of light. Um, lighting is really important and we've already developed our V2 and V3 version of lighting. At the moment, we've got one consistent light source. Um, from a 3D model point of view, that's just coming from above and lighting the assets up and showing how bright it is. Our team um, are geniuses and they've figured out actually how to get the light source from Windows. And so in an, a very near future update, we're going to be able to show real-time lighting and reflections based on where windows are within the actual Matterport tour. The other part here that you can see, it might not look like much, but it really does assist in creating a lifelike experience is shadows. Um, it's very subtle and it's important that it is subtle, but you can see under the table here, we've got a shadow under the, the table, sorry, under the chair, we've got some shadows and on that um, uh, side table, we've got the shadows there. The shadows are currently sourced by this individual light in the future it will be um, the real-time lighting. But when you have these shadows come into play, it removes the um, cartoonish factor from a lot of these experiences. It makes it look a lot more lifelike. Um, so I'll let this continue to play through. So um, as you jump out, you can see it in the 3D model uh, sitting in situ, fantastically positioned within the space itself. And then we're going to jump out into the floor plan and seeing it from above. Um, so all of these assets are now positioned quite nicely within it. Uh, all you need to do is to get this live is click the save and publish button in the top right corner and away you go. And so that's the initial experience of uh, virtual staging. Cool. Uh, I do have questions about virtual staging before I ask, are you still showing more regarding virtual staging? Uh, you can ask some questions and I can jump into another video if you like afterwards. Uh, sure. So on the, uh, if I have my own assets, what file formats? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Um, so to begin with, we're accepting GLBs. Um, for those of you who don't know, a GLB is a compressed 3D asset file type. Um, you can uh, convert OBJs. And so the Matterport um, dollhouse is an OBJ. That's what it's delivered by. Uh, FBXs, which is another generic 3D asset file type. Um, you can easily convert these into GLBs. Uh, we've actually got a converter, online converter um, link in our support pages online that allows you to upload any asset and convert it to a GLB. The reason why we use GLB is it's the most lightweight. It's a binary 3D format which means that when you're loading a 3D tour with hundreds of assets, new assets within it, it's not going to take forever. And it comes back to our core principle of making sure it works and simply works every single time. Um, I yeah. noticed in that apartment, in that space, I want to say there was some other furniture before the staging started. Uh, I may be a little confused on that. Uh, do I need an empty space? Uh, you can do it in a in a space that's already there um, or an empty space. Um, so our assets actually can cover any existing furniture that may be in the um, property. And so ah, let's say I have a ten million dollar painting up on the wall, and I don't yeah. want someone to see that. I I could cover that ten million dollar painting with a different painting. Correct. Yes. Or um, let's say that the uh, the basin in the bathroom is cracked in your beautiful $10 million property. You don't want to show that in the virtual tour. You can place a new basin on top of it. Um, and so the end user doesn't see that. Okay. So uh, with the do-it-yourself virtual staging of a Matterport space powered by Captured, I can't remove objects, but I can 
hover objects. That's correct. Okay. Uh, do your does your design team have any best practices, suggestions, recommendations for uh, for me? I, I uh, I'm not sure my wife would trust me with uh, to to do staging. Uh, even with real stuff, uh, let alone with virtual staging. So is, is, uh, some tips or best practices that when it comes to staging for, for non-designers? Yeah, it's, it's a really good point. Um, we've actually had an interior designer um, working with our 3D artists uh, to create the furniture. So everything that you see in our standard offering are curated pieces of furniture um, that do connect with each other. So you can uh, place different pieces of furniture together that you know are going to work. Um, we are working on catalogs moving forward and so that you could have a country style design or a modern design. And rather than placing individual assets, you can click on the living room um, modern style and it's going to pop up with the correct sofa, rug and uh, credenza all together within a piece. Uh, we... The other key part around this is it can be quite uh, time consuming to stage an entire property, making sure the asset's in the right place. And so by pre providing these catalog opportunities, you can at least place the vast majority of your assets and then tweak or edit them moving forward as well. Mm -hmm. do, do you anticipate having third party companies or, or captured offering design services for those that want virtual staging but don't want to do it themselves? Yeah, that's actually something on our roadmap. Um, once we get a stronger grip on the asset side and so the catalog, um, just like our post-production, so the way that we can create a highlight reel for your virtual tour, we are going to start offering uh, post-production for virtual staging as well. Um, there's a few things that we need to work out in terms of how long it's going to take and that's going to be considerate in the time and the, therefore how much it's going to cost. Um, but if we can make that system as automated as possible, we can bring down that cost as much as possible. And so uh, you can expect that to come later in the year um, once we've got all of the assets and all of the uh, pieces in the right place. Mm -hmm. So today is Thursday, February 25th, 2021. Uh, virtual uh, do-it-yourself virtual staging of Matterport spaces powered by Captured 3D is presently in beta. Just launched your beta this past Monday. That's correct. Okay, so I'm, I'm watching the show today. I'm interested. How do I how do I sign up for the uh, Captured DIY virtual staging beta? So there's two ways um, or two parts that you need it to uh, connect. So you first need to sign up to Captured um, through the- And that's the, the WGAN.info forward slash Captured, C-A-P-T-U-R-3-D, the number three D. Again, that's to get your six free floor plans, six free site plans. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so now that I've set up a free account with Captured. Mm -hmm. Once you've got that account, uh, join our Facebook community group. And so that's Captured Community Group CCG. Um, and in that community group uh, online, there is a form that you can sign up on. And so just entering in your Captured provider name. And so that's the company name that you've signed up to in Captured. And then we can provide you with access to this beta. It will be going into live public beta. Um, so everyone will get access to it. Uh, in at the 6th of March. If you'd like early access to it though, however, join the Facebook community group and we can get you into the system. Okay, great. So uh, we'll, we're recording today's show uh, below in the notes. We'll make a point to add the link uh, to get to the captured Facebook group specifically for this topic. Okay, so I then fill out the form. How long until I hear back from captured? Our customer service team will get back to you within uh, 12 hours to let you know what beta group that you're in and when you'll be getting access. We are staging it out in groups of 100 um, at a time to get access every few days. Okay. And uh, so uh, at that point, I'm using the captured back end content management system and my account would be flagged or enabled to have access to the beta. That's correct. Okay, uh, and so far I think we're talking about totally free. Totally free, everything's free so far. Free while it's in beta. Uh, is it too soon to talk about money? It is a little bit too soon. Um, we're still trying to figure out the exact price points. Um, we don't wanna have ongoing hosting fees or anything like that. And so we're trying to figure out a single price point, pay once and have access forever. Um, there are a few little finer details that we need to figure out uh, along with our hosting requirements with AWS, but we'll be able to share some news with that in the next coming weeks. Okay, and that's interesting. I think if I heard, it's not pay per room or pay per 
listing, it's actually pay for access a one-time fee? For the property. So um, ah, per property. So, yeah. so if you wanted to virtually stage uh, 123 Main Street, you would pay some fee for being able to do the virtual staging, whether it was one room or the entire house. Yeah, and these are the pieces that we're trying to work out because um, is it adequate if you just wanted to place one little asset um, compared to staging a full property um, and how we can help make sure that people are getting the best use out of virtual staging. Um, and so we're fin ironing out these details at the moment. So for my captured account, is is there a collaboration opportunity? So if, if I wanted to invite a, another team member without giving them my password and sign in, is there a credential that is just gives them access to either one model or a collection of models? Or how, how does how does how does that process work? If I want to bring in a third party person, but I don't necessarily want to give them the keys to the kingdom. Yeah, so it works very similar to the Matterport Collaborator Access, but we have unlimited um, cap numbers on it. So you can invite as many people as you would like. There's different stages. So obviously you as the admin have full control out of everything. You can invite users into your account. And so users have access to all of the properties within the account, but don't see the things like the payments um, and the ordering processes. And then the next step down from that is the client portal. And so that's a limited area where the, they see the forward facing information um, and can edit things like your virtual staging um, on particular properties that are connected to a brand. So if you have, have but don't don't have don't don't have the ability to delete any models in the account, can't see the money, can't change passwords. It's it's really I think of that as an editor that I can invite an editor to my account, whomever that might be, in order to do the virtual staging if that's what I choose. Correct. And it's on a per property basis as well. So, um, or per branding, I should say. So if you had Remax and um, Ray White, they would only see the properties that are associated to that branding or client. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Stephen, I, uh, at, at the beginning of the discussion, you talked about, I think, hundreds of assets. Can, can you expand on that or where you think you'll be by the end of 2021? Yeah. So we're in discussions with a number of different um global organizations that have access to these assets. I can't say exactly who at the moment, but the goal is uh, that we're going to have um, a wide variety of different industry specific assets. Um, and we'd like to see thousands upon thousands of assets within our engine. And so whether it's for residential real estate, so couches, sofas, dining tables, commercial real estate, desks, computers, um, office storage, and things like that. And then all the way through to museums and retail. Um, within museums and retail, uh, we see it being more of a upload your own asset situation. So anyone that's worked within retail stores or potentially had a discussion with a supermarket, one of their biggest um, uh, uh, problems at the moment is shelf placement. And it costs a lot of money to test out different shelf placement. You could upload your 3D asset of that shelf placement, put it into the virtual tour and test it out through different heat map analytics and get a better understanding of that as well. Um, I did have a quick example of um, a uploading a 3D asset within a space that's a little bit different to what you may be expecting. Um, if you'd like me to just quickly jump in. Yeah, that'd be great. Actually, I don't know what I would be expecting. I, I just imagine there's a button and it says upload and then shows up in my library and then I drag it to the space. My Pretty question. much, you're, you're spot on. The only thing yeah. is uh, I've got a slightly unexpected asset, we could say, just to show you the capabilities of what our engine can already do. So I'm gonna share my screen from this point just to show you how it all works. You can see the screen okay? Yes, do you want to, do you want to go full screen with that or no? Yes, I will. Um, and so where we were before, and this is that property page showing our um, Example piece, we click on virtual staging. And so this is now the area in which we conduct or start our virtual staging start. And so if I click on edit my stage property, this is gonna automatically open in full screen. Um, the reason being you want as much area and space to be able to do your editing um, as you go. I've been told that I should never do live um, uh, displays of technology because it never works out. And so here we go. And I'm looking forward to doing this itself. So we were talking about it before being able to click many assets. So you can see here as I'm scrolling down um, heaps and heaps of different assets. Let's just put a table Did, in. Just is this the, the first time you've done a public live uh, demo of uh, DYI virtual staging of Matterport Spaces powered by Capture? 
this is the first time uh, globally, and luckily it's very early here in Australia, so all of my developers and uh, designers are asleep, so um, I'm not getting in trouble for doing a live demonstration on your show. Uh, uh, okay, great. World premiere. Um, and so you can see here the dining table, this green box um, will show exactly where I'm going to be placing it. Um, the reason why it's a green box is it's very lightweight, and so I can move it around to find the exact area that I want to place it in the spot. And so as I place it down, I click on the area, and it's still in its lightweight format to allow me to move it around. And as I click away from it, it full, uh, comes in fully light and rendered. I note that the asset does come out a lot higher res in the forward, face, forward facing version, which I'll show you in a second. Um, this is still in low res to let, allow you to edit. So if I click on the asset again, I can easily move it forward and back, left and right by using these toggles. But we've also got all the information down here if you wanna get really precise. And so for instance, the scale, if I wanted to make it bigger, I can simply scale it up or we'll scale it down. Um, the rotation is automatically locked um, to the Y axis, which means if I move it, um, it's gonna rotate around on the Y axis, as you can see, slowly moving around there. Uh, the reason being is um, very rarely do you wanna change the X and Z, because um, it's gonna end up making the asset quite wonky in the space, but there are times that you want to, and if you did, you can simply click on the unlock, and now I can change the asset however I see fit. Um, and now I have a wonky asset. There we go. Um, and the last one here is the position, which I've been playing with. Again, it's locked to the Y axis, which is at the floor. And so if I click on the Y axis, moving it back and forward here and moving around in the space. And so I'm just going to leave that asset there sitting in that spot. You can see here all the assets that I've got are all sitting in my collection here. If I was to quickly just add a chair to this as well, just to finish it off. Fantastic. Um, and then the lighting, which was quickly shown. You can see the lighting's quite low right now. So if I brighten everything up, all the way to the max, it becomes quite bright. Um, this is dependent, I guess, on the room. Um, and so you'd want to kind of look at it from a 3D model point of view to see what works best within that space. As you can see, I'm lighting and I'm dropping it forward and you can see uh, the shadow. Uh, Stephen, a few questions just on what you've done so far. So mm. when you bring in furniture for the first time, is it already at what I would consider the proper scale for that chair and table? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, and sorry that I missed it. So our teams work very hard on making all of the assets world scale. Um, and so this is going to be one of the biggest problems when you upload your own assets. Um, the size of them could be quite different. And so every time you click on an asset, so let's bring in a footstool, um, you'll see that it's correctly proportioned to the assets around it. And so to the table and to the chair that I've already brought in. Um, similarly, a meeting pod, which works well because I am in an office right here. Um, I can place that meeting pod over here. Now that chair is, is behind the table. Mm -hmm. uh, was that an, by accident that it didn't end up going in front? Uh, so that's where I placed it. Um, I just placed it over there just as a side. So I can put it um, in front right here. And but I, sitting to, to make sure that the table doesn't slice into the chair. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to ask that question. Uh, I would imagine if I, if I put that, if I push that chair in any further, well, it's, yeah, so is I just have to visually do that where I know that I have a conflict with the asset. That's correct. And the, you can, it's on the um, position on the X axis, but if you were to, sorry, on the Y axis, but if you were to lift it up, for instance, you could have it even sitting on top of the table. And so it's up to the individual and how they want to place the assets. The reason being, you can have multiple assets sitting on top of each other. So you could have a rug with a table, with a pot plant, with a TV, and all of them are sitting on top of each other and the way that you place them would um, define where you are gonna end up. So do I need to place them in the order of put down the rug first then put down the table then put that put the flower pot on? It's so no, it's, it's completely flexible. So I'll do it in this corner here to show you. We'll start with the rug. Or we'll start with the table because then you can, um, we'll put the table, the rug underneath That's what I'm it. trying to understand is like, if I put the table down first and then I decide that I need a rug, is, is rug going to cover table? <laughs> uh, no, so you just push it down below the table um, when you place it. So let's find a nice, um, do I have a rug? Let's go with a- Carpet. Maybe it's just uh, carpet. named differently. Rug. Carpet, floor covering. Floor. Um, the team is working on updating the assets at the moment. So maybe uh, what you would have seen in the video was the staging side. So let's yes. try and just put a plant on it. We can put a plant on the table. The yes. plant, fantastic. Um, and so it's quite a big asset that you can see here, which probably still needs to be compressed a little bit. 
And so right now we've got a big asset, sorry, I zoomed in. On... And does it automatically snap in place to the appropriate level? So you were close enough to the table, so it knew the height should snap to the table? Um, it doesn't automatically snap, but that's why we have this green box. And so you can see the different layers that I'm on as I'm moving this green box. I might find a different asset that's a little All right, bit I, I can't tell. I'm, I can't tell from that green box whether it was the plant or the table. So let me just put that there. What I'll do is I'll use this ah, example. Okay, so you, when you got close to the wall, you, you could see that if you went further, you, you would have been higher up. It would Correct. Have, it would have been floating in the air. Correct, so if I've got this lamp here, you can see it's on the floor plane and then it's on the table plane. So it picks up the table ah, plane as well. Okay, it's, oh, it does. That, to me, that's sort of like snapping to the right place. Yeah, and so I can just place it on that, just like okay. that. Um, and so that's just placing a number of different assets within the space in itself. The table's still wonky because we're playing with it before. We don't recommend playing with the Y axis if you can avoid it, but um, being able to upload your own assets. So we've been through the lighting um, and a few other different things. I'll leave those assets there, but you have the custom section. And so this is where you upload your own assets. Um, the team's been playing with a number of different experiences here uh, that can break the system. But what I'm gonna upload is an asset that I prepared earlier. Um, it was from our actually award-winning experience um, with Google and Netflix. It's actually an animated asset. And so what this is showing is you can upload your furniture, yes, but you can also get pretty creative in this space. Um, so I'm gonna name it uh, animation. Um, you can select the category. So in the future, if you wanted to uh, put it with your seating and you could search seating, then your assets would also come up um, to make it a lot easier. And you could also upload a thumbnail. As you can see on the left-hand side, there's thumbnails that have been uploaded so you can easily recognize your asset. If you don't select either of those, it still works fine. And we give it a nice little icon for you to remember. So if I click on animation now, I'll get my big green box in here. And as I click down, you can see within the Matterport tour itself, we now have an elephant animated and walking around. Um, this is just showing the extent of which our engine works. The lighting is all playing down on um, the individual asset as well. Uh, as I come through here, it's gonna to continue to move even in the 3D model. We do a lot of creative pieces um, with this sort of thing. Uh, again, this could be your couch. It could be a coffee table, but I'm showing just the extent in which our engine is capable at this point in time, um, even yeah. the lighting options. Well, uh, we at this point, we really ought to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> uh, very good. I lined you off for that one. Um, but it is just a beautiful experience. Um, we've been testing with things like fog. So imagine in Halloween, you can create a tour and put fog throughout the floor. And um, we're pretty excited about where this can take us in the very near future. This is so awesome. It, I, I'm, I'm physically tingling. It's, it's really, it's quite amazing to, to see you be able to do that. Uh, so do I need to be saving as I keep working? Or is there saving going on in the background or am I about to lose all my work because that elephant uh, did something to memory in, our, in my computer? Um, we do have the save function. We recommend clicking it as often as possible as you're going through the spot. And so I can save this as a draft at the moment and it will constantly save. Every time you place an asset and you're happy with it, we recommend saving it. Um, the reason why we don't do automatic saving um, is because the engine itself is actually running um, a partial saving. So I can click undo and redo. And so we've, collected a different stage within that space itself um, for it anyway, but for it to be saved properly, um, we recommend clicking the save button often. Okay, so, and save is not published. So right now, all we've done is, is save it prior to publishing. Correct. And so if I come out of this space now, um, the first time and only on the first time, you need to action the publish. And then in the future, it's really simple for you to just go back and forth. There are a few settings and that's the reason why we've put it here. So when I click publish, I can choose to, um, if the individual, uh, the end user sees the staging on arrival. And so what this means is, do you want them to see all the assets that you've placed or do you want them to be able to turn it on and off um, or see it at before and after? And so I want them to see my staging before I get there, but I also wanna give them the possibility to turn it off if they wanna see what it looks like without it. Um, there may be cases where you don't want them to be able to turn it off because you're covering that $10 million painting as we discussed before. And sometimes you do want them to see what the space looks like um, without it. And so now that's all been set, I've clicked my publish button. Um, I can preview it here, but I'm gonna go back um, to the virtual tour overlay link um, and open up a new full screen tab. You can see here on the sidebar, 
we've got a um, trigger to keep it on and off. Our elephant's in there running around. As I move over with the lighting conditions, um, we've got a two different plants here. I should have staged this a little bit better. I apologize. I was too caught up in our conversation and just realized I've put assets in different areas. But you can see that the assets are a lot higher quality in the final version. I'm not sure if that's coming through in the screen share. Uh, yeah. I do recommend trying it yourself, um, but you can see that the lighting and the assets do come out a bit better in the Ford first. Even this elephant, you can see the wrinkles. Hypothetically, I wanted to turn it off just like that. I can see what the space looks like and being able to turn it back on um, and everything comes back into play exactly where cool. it is. And I presume I can go back to this space at any time and edit uh, the, uh, the staging. Yep, and so if I wanna jump back in and edit my stage property, it's exactly the, the same thing that we've come back to. All of our assets will load up on the left-hand side here. Um, let's delete these plants because they're making a mess of the space. Um, and we might wanna add a bed. Ah, so there was some global changing to, to say, uh, all the assets are on the right side. Were there multiple plants? I don't recall when before you deleted it. Yes, there were. And so if I was to add the same bed twice, um, you can see at the bottom there, the bunk bed. I can put another bunk bed and another one's going to pop up. Take me towards it by the looks of it. And so if I click out of that, we can see both these bunk beds side by side. Um, if I click on it, it's going to show me which asset it is ah, as well. Okay. Um, and let's say I want to delete this one because I haven't positioned it correctly. Away it goes. Um, but then I want to bring it back. I can easily bring it back by clicking the redo or undo button as well up the top. So uh, I, I did have some more questions. Were there more things that you wanted to show us? No, please um, hit me with the questions. And just the last part now, because it is published and it is live, when I click save, it no longer says save and draft. It's now save and publish. And so clicking publish, and I come back to my experience and reload my tour. You'll see no more plants and you'll see some bunk beds. And it's all automatically rendered through the system. A lot of beds have loaded up. And away we go. So, I, so I would say this is, this is nearly real time uh, yeah. that, that we're talking about. It's, it's not waiting a week. It's not waiting a day. It's boom, hit, hit save and publish. And I've just updated it again. Correct. So I, I wanted to go back to this uh, about collection. So uh, when you start when you start out in beta, there is a finite set of, of furniture assets. Are those and and I and I have to now say assets because I now know the elephant in the room defines that it doesn't have to be furniture, and, unless you call the elephant a trunk. But we'll save that for a different day. So. Is there something initially about uh, the, 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 I want to call it a family of furniture, what, a collection? So mm -hmm. uh, when I start looking at a particular sofa, is it always presenting to me furniture that would be complementary to that, that sofa so that I don't end up picking something else that's I, I've, I picked the modern style sofa and now all of a sudden I'm picking a country chair and it's weird. Yeah, it's actually a really good point. Um, the smarts and intelligence behind it um, are gonna get better and better because we have a limited pool of assets right now. There's about 250 to 300. Um, it's constantly growing each day. Uh, they've been specifically curated, um, which means that they come in at the right size. They look fantastic. Um, the colors and textures are there. In regards to different um, connections. There are some assets that don't go with other assets quite clearly, but what we've tried to do is keep it as a collective. And so whilst they are different in nature, um, a lot of these assets can be put together um, and fit really well together in itself. And so you can be um, assured that when you're placing these assets and pieces in it, even though you're not an interior designer, um, it's going to end up looking great. So I might surprise my wife. You should give it a crack, see what happens. Okay. <laughs> So you're moving, what you anticipate is having collections though. So if, if I'm going to design a, a bedroom and I've picked the modern style, I could just pick the bedroom and all of a sudden the bed, the side tables, the lamps, the plants, the end tables, the chairs, the rug might all just pop in so that I'm just moving those assets to the right place and then making a decision, oh, I wanna delete that 
picture that's on the wall uh, or I want to add a picture. So mm -hmm. I think that's what I heard. You're, you're moving towards being able to just give a collection. So somebody like me, who's not necessarily a designer, could at least start out with a collection of furniture that might be appropriate for a typical bedroom. Yeah, correct. And there's probably going to be a couple pieces of hierarchy to that. And so you could pick your, um, the first place you'd pick is your uh, end result. And so let's call it a beach property, um, or it might be a New York style loft. And so you'd, or contemporary or whatever it may be, and you'd pick that style. And then you'd be provided with different options, bathroom, bedroom, lounge room. When you click on that, that collection or set, as we call it, will automatically populate within that room. Um, we would hope in the future that we could somehow automate knowing exactly where the walls are and exactly where the bed is and it automatically goes into position. But to begin with, it's just going to provide you those assets in the scene. And then you, like you mentioned, will need to place them in the exact area that you want them to. Cool. So it's kind of a filter from the big picture to the small. So it might be, might be beach, then it might be which room within the beach house. Correct. Okay, cool. Anything else on uh, the do-it-yourself virtual staging of a Matterport space powered by Captured? The last piece, um, and it connects us to the next part of our discussion, is once you've got those uh, virtual assets staged within the property, you can see they mobile and on the web, but we also have our augmented reality experience as well. And so uh, we've made sure that when you um, create this experience, you can see it in augmented reality. And um, I might show that at the end of the AR Connect piece um, as we go through to show that example. Um, I guess the oh, last little piece is, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say on virtual staging is uh, what's to come. Um, and so we spoke about real estate and commercial real estate. Uh, something that we're working on right now is um, batch uploads. So rather than uploading an individual asset, being able to upload thousands of assets at any given time, if you have them. Um, also painting tools. So you probably would have seen that tool set in Matterport Labs, where you can paint the floors and walls, bringing that into the engine. Uh, sorry. So is, is, is that supported by uh, Captured, the ability to change the, the floor, change it from tile to wood, change yep. the paint color on the wall from blue to pink? Yep. That, yep. So that, that's part of virtual staging uh, uh, by Captured. It will be, yeah. And so that's um, what we're working on as we speak at the moment. Okay. And so, before before uh, we move on to augmented reality, was there anything else on virtual reality that you want, uh, excuse me, on uh, virtual, virtual staging? staging? Yeah, so there was those tool sets for the painting. Um, the other one, which is going to be great for engineering, is BIM integration. And so for anyone that's worked in the construction or engineering space, uh, understanding the importance of BIM um, as it's becoming more and more important and the um, difficulties in which it um, works to access BIM and play with it and manipulate it. Um, and so we're going to be providing uh, accessibility to place your BIM file in the property um, into the virtual staging engine. It will be a BIM engine at that point and be able to see the metadata to understand the um, item code or warranty within that asset on the BIM as well. And so that's coming later in the year, but we're really excited about that as well. I'm trying to understand that. So, I've, uh, so I shoot a construction site that maybe is only pre-drywall. Mm -hmm. And there's a BIM model that's completely built out with electrical, mechanical, plumbing, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I then bring in the BIM model into the Matterport digital twin at mm -hmm. that point in time of construction. And is the purpose of that is to, is to look for conflicts of, oh, gee, uh, what we thought was going to fit is not going to fit where we thought it was because the, uh, somebody built out the, 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 um, the framing uh, too, too narrow. Is that, is that an example of where, where this is headed? Yeah, that's a really good example. At that point in time before the drywall goes up um, and you have those uh, items uh, accessible so you can actually still see them to a certain extent by placing the BIM or the design BIM on top of the space you can see conflicts or potentially uh, progress uh, and that progress could show that the contractor has put the pipes five meters to the left of where it should be and that's going to cause an issue for the electrician and flow on effects from that as well after the fact once the property is completely completed and you scan it at that point you could use the completion um, BIM 
or the design beam to overlay within that space. And so let's say that you want to cut down a wall rather than trying to figure out what's behind that wall. You could look at the Matterport tour with the beam overlay and see exactly what pipes and electricals are within that space itself. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> That's unbelievable. So uh, is so if you if you if you have flooding going on in your commercial office space and you need to know where some key plumbing is and you don't want to keep putting holes in the in the wall looking for it, you'd actually be able to look at the actual Matterport space with the BIM overlay and immediately know, oh, that's the spot on the wall where I need to put put, put a 10 inch hole uh, because there's there's something behind there. There's the joint of the of the the pipes that's likely causing that uh, uh, that leak that, that we're experiencing. That's correct. And then it kind of connects and we'll go into it after this, but um, into AR Connect. And so the augmented reality piece. And so you've looked at it online. Now you can use your augmented reality tool to actually go to that wall and see everything within that space oh, as well. So exciting. Okay. So uh, we, we've been talking about uh, uh, do-it-yourself virtual staging of a Matterport space captured by 3D. Before we jump into augmented reality, captured 3D AR Connect, before we do that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, first, we, we should just take a moment in time and go, oh my gosh, your uh, captured is adding so much value to the Matterport space. This is like so amazing. Uh, and it will enable uh, Matterport service providers in, in, in particular to be able to add additional value to trick out their, their space uh, to deliver it to the client, I, I think of that as an add-on, another opportunity to make money. It's solving a, a problem or challenge for a client, but for a Matterport service provider, that actually translates to an add-on to make money. So uh, uh, I, I guess I should say congratulations and thank you, um, because this is like, this. I, I just can imagine that there are members in the We Get Around Network Forum community who have just looked at what you've showed and uh, either have design skills in, in, in furnishing or maybe not, but see that it doesn't look like it's beyond their capability uh, and could say, oh, well, maybe I could hire, use another platform tied into Matterport, but then I probably have to stage the entire space and I gotta pay somebody else to do it. And all of a sudden it might become cost prohibitive where all I really needed to do was virtually stage maybe a bedroom, a living room, and maybe the entrance, three spaces, don't have to stage the entire space, just enough to help a potential prospect for that space to visualize it. Yeah, so are, are, are you and your team actually like bouncing off the walls because you're so excited that you're at this beta stage and, it, and, and it's, it's like it's now happening and you see the potential? Yeah, definitely. I think um, a lot of credit, all of the credit goes to our amazing design and development teams. Uh, they've been working tirelessly for the last six or eight months on a number of these experiences, virtual staging and AR Connect. And a lot of the time, and especially within uh, the COVID restricted worlds, they've been sitting behind their computers at home and just developing. And now that we're starting to get some feedback, um, their eyes are lighting up. And it's just the fact that we're able to create benefit and value to our customers um, is just the most exciting part for us. You, you mentioned it before as well. Um, these experiences are intended to generate more revenue um, out of that single tour that people are creating for a property. And so, yes, you can create a virtual tour. Now you can add on your floor plans and your photos. But what about when we do virtual staging and an AR experience? Um, what we're hoping for is that you're still doing that single piece of creation, but we're 10Xing or potentially 100Xing the revenue that you may have been charging previously. Um, and that to us excites us because that means that there's more opportunity for all of you in the community to um, create some amazing content with some amazing clients um, and make it worth your while with the revenue that you could be generating. Um, you know, and if also, I, if I, excuse yeah. me, if I just pick a number and say, hey, you know, I charge $300 to, to do that space, to create a Matterport tour, uh, conceivably I might be doing $200 of virtual staging. Uh, let's pick an easier number. I might be doing $300 worth of virtual staging and I've doubled the revenue and presumably it's taken me a fraction of the time for that second piece. 
And so I've added a huge amount of value, huge amount of perceived value from the client's perspective where I have the potential to double my, if I, if I could literally offer virtual staging for every property, not gonna happen because every property doesn't need virtual staging. But I, I think you can almost visualize if you're shooting empty spaces all the time, yeah, you might have the possibility of, of, of doubling uh, your revenue uh, by uh, providing this uh, virtual staging add-on of a Matterport mm-hmm. space. So uh, exciting. Yeah. What, what's been the initial reaction from uh, those in the beta so far? Uh, we've got some really good feedback on the UI and UX. It's um, something that we've taken a lot of time on to make sure it is really easy. Uh, we've got a good collection of individuals, people that are very tech savvy, interior designers, MSPs, um, even people um, who are um, not so tech savvy. Um, all trialing it out. And so the feedback so far is that it's really easy to place furniture and it's actually quite enjoyable. Uh, A number of people have likened it to Sims in real life, um, which is super exciting. Um, For us, the the pieces that we're working on that we know that we need to provide more is just on the assets. And so um, if we've got all the experience down, um, now we can focus all our efforts on providing amazing high quality assets with um, real-time lighting. Um, But yeah, the feedback has been uh, great. And just going back to your point, I think you've hit the nail on the head around the opportunity for generating that additional revenue. Our plan is to keep this as cheap as possible. And so you, the margin is on the MSP to create. But um, in real world activities, if you're getting an interior designer out to physically place furniture within your house, it would be thousands upon thousands of dollars to do this. And then you're technically renting it for the time that it is staged for the photography or open house, comparably to virtually staged images within tour or things like that, which again, could go upwards of a thousand dollars cost to you as an individual. We're trying to make that as a fraction of the piece, and so that the the benefit is on you to make that money out in the um, out in the wild, I should say. Yeah, and, and that's pretty cool because let's say you are working for a real estate agent, and the and the agent is used to staging. Uh, uh, I don't know what you call that, real staging, physical staging. If the agent <laughs> is is used to physical staging. And is spending a thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars to do physical in-person staging, and you, as a Matterport service provider, can do it at one tenth the cost. Then it becomes a no-brainer that your agent loves you because you've saved them money and you still accomplish the same thing. And frankly, during COVID. Uh, where there may be less people physically visiting the space anyway, and the conversation anyway begins online, looking at spaces anyway, uh, you have a very powerful value proposition to to offer a client. And I suspect even when you get done with pricing, there's going to still be an opportunity to add a layer to say, hey, I still want to, I want to engage someone who's a professional at doing staging to, you know, hey, that was pretty cool. I had fun. You know, uh, pl- playing uh, virtual sims if that's what we were talking about uh, but okay I, my time's valuable as business development as scanning and I want to find a third party solution and maybe at some point that's captured to, to, to say please virtually stage my space I'm willing to pay for that and yet it still comes in at a price point that will be uh, uh, a fraction of, of physical uh, physical staging. So anyway, uh, very exciting. Congratulations to you, your team for adding a huge amount of value. Uh, I guess last question before we move on, when does this come out of beta? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, so we're going into, we're in private beta right now. So invite only, as we discussed before, join the community group, go via the link that you've been discussing in this. Um, it goes into public beta, which means anyone with a captured account will have access to it um, on the 6th of March. And so coming up very shortly, and we are hosting a webinar around that to dive into deeper um, pieces on how we can actually manipulate assets and a few other things. Uh, the goal is in um, April, most likely towards the middle of April next um it is almost next month, two months from now, um, is when it's going to be going live. And by then we're going to have a large collection of assets um, and new features within that space in itself. And so there's going to be consistent news every week um, within updates uh, and how we're tracking along towards those dates in itself. But we are also being flexible. Uh, We want to make sure when this does go live, um, it has the best possibility to uh, create value for all of you. In the meantime, you can still sell this into your customers. There's no stopping it. It's live in the virtual tours. In any case, we're just not going to be charging for it in the short term. Uh, uh, Stephen, you're in Melbourne, Australia. I'm in Atlanta. For me, today is Thursday, February 25th. For you, today is Friday, February 26th. 
So is that April 6th date, is that a Melbourne April 6th or is that a Atlanta April 6th? Uh, so it's Melbourne um, March the 6th for that public March, date off. Mark, yep. I, I'm sorry, I'm, the, I'm, I'm trying to go to the webinar. When, when, when is your- uh, March the 6th. And what, so- Melbourne that, time. So Melbourne, if, okay. So yep. that for our viewers in the United States, March 5th is the day for that webinar. Uh, if you go to the We Get Around Network forum, wganforum.com, we have all the details of how to sign up for that, uh, that webinar uh, for uh, do-it-yourself virtual staging of a Matterport space powered by Captured to do a little bit deeper dive, even though what we've covered today. Okay, mm -hmm. great, augmented reality powered by Captured. Yeah, so this is another fantastic feature that we've been working on for quite a long time. It's been in beta for the last few months and uh, we've had some amazing feedback on this as well. Uh, a little bit of a backstory. The reason why we built this tool set was um, on our studio side of our business where we create uh, custom uh, projects or experiences for our clients. Uh, we kept asking or being asked for a digital twin alignment uh, experience where you could align anything to a physical world and have it visualized within your space. Uh, we started off charging a few hundred thousand dollars for these experiences that would take us six months to create. Um, and we end up seeing that there were similarities within it um, to the point that we realized that we could offer this to anyone with a Matterport camera without any technical knowledge and no development requirements as well. And so what we used to charge for a couple hundred thousand dollars and take six months can now be done for um, less than a hundred dollars or free currently anyway. And within a few seconds, I'm really excited about that. An automated uh, augmented reality experience that connects directly into your Matterport tour uh, to bring life into the space, whether it's, again, through retail, um, museums, real estate, or anything else that you may be providing content for. And it's just another one of these layers uh, that we can charge um, or create value for you to then charge onto your customers, I should say. It's a little bit hard to get your hands around augmented reality meets Matterport. Could you, is, is, do you have some examples, examples? I think it will make it easier to have a conversation about it if we actually take a look at, well, what is an example of an augmented reality overlay on top of a Matterport tour? Yeah, I'll um, load up a video here. Apologies if the audio plays quickly. No, I got it just in time. Um, so I'll quickly play a video here. Alex, for anyone that's interacted with um, Captured in the past, you would have no doubt spoken to Alex. He's our um, senior account manager. He answers all your problems and solves all the issues that ever arise and makes you just have a great time. He's the one demonstrating it in this piece. Um, so it does have audio. So I'm going to let this play and let him speak to the experience. And it's just showing him, showing us um, the different parts of AR Connect. So I'll share my screen and um, let this play through. It's about a minute or two minutes, I should say. Hey guys, so I'll show you some spatial tags that we've created just in the corner of the office here. Um, these are created as matter tags in the Manipool workshop, but we've gone a step further and we're also now able to integrate uh, websites embedded straight into the matter tags SoundCloud links, PDFs, um, so I'll show you a few examples and we'll go from there. So the Matterport camera just here, we can click on the closest spatial tag. That's going to bring up a PDF of leasing options for the Matterport camera. Obviously there's so many variables for this to be used in retail and other industries. We're going to go over here to this lovely mural on the wall made by a local artist, Lucy Lucy on this matter tag and this is actually her website embedded straight into that matter tag so being able to navigate around no problem so really great tool for showcasing gallery spaces museums etc more over to the capture banner over here so we'll click on this spatial tag just there and this is going to generate a uh, video of captured so allowing us to play it directly within the matter tag Straight from there. We'll leave that for another time. And then moving over here, more kind of simple content that we'll integrate into here. So this beautiful uh, fiddle leaf tree, we can click on the tag located there. And as you can see, it's coming out with text, images, some more information. And then finally over here, we have in the music corner, SoundCloud integrated directly into that spatial tag. You're able to play music directly from within there. So 
so many capabilities of our connect within uh, different industries. Uh, one other final thing I wanted to show you as well is we also have an awesome capture button in the bottom right hand corner. So this is going to allow you to take photos on the fly as you're walking through, any spatial tags and information, save them, share them, social media, whatever you needed to do. And then also screen caps, video recordings as well. So you can record video directly from within the AR connector and save and share them from in there as well. So that's kind of an overview of what's possible. Um, thanks a lot. Any questions, get in touch. More than to help. Thank you, Alex. Great, I have questions about that video, but before I ask my questions, do you wanna play your other video at this point? Yeah, I'll quickly show. So this is what's currently available. The next video I'll quickly show is, um, okay. hey, is um, what's just around the corner. And so I'll just load this up um, because this is really exciting for us um, around what it is that we're about to release. So I'll quickly play this and we can dive into all the questions on AR Connect. Terrific. Do you do you want to jump in and, and talk about um, uh, captured AR Connect augmented reality? Do you want me to ask you questions? What, where, where would you like to begin? Um, you mentioned you had some questions. Let's start there and we can see where we end up. <clears throat> so I, um, to, again, this is like an, an ordinate of magnitude exciting uh, to kind of kind of break it down. It, it wasn't obvious to me that what was happening was that there was a smartphone looking at actual reality, kind of like I was looking through a camera app at the environment. Mm -hmm. So I imagine there, the, the first thing that's happening is there's some kind of alignment that's taking place where your captured augmented reality app is perfectly aligning with the environment so that it sort of looks like I was just looking through my camera at, at, at the space. So I, I, I guess, for example, if I was going to look at a house for sale mm -hmm. and I was in the kitchen of that house and I pulled out my a, captured 3D AR Connect app and I'm not looking at the Matterport tour, exactly. I'm actually holding up the camera in the kitchen. So maybe I'm looking at the refrigerator. And when I hold up my camera to the refrigerator, because a Matterport tour was created of that space, and because some annotation of that refrigerator, maybe a video or text uh, or some other form of annotation took place, when I hold up my phone, to the refrigerator in that house, it's actually giving me an augmented experience on top of the reality. That's absolutely correct. You've explained it really well there. Um, the part that we didn't show at the start of the first video um, is actually that alignment process in itself. And so- Can, can you show that alignment? Because I, I think that would, would, would help. It's not immediately, I you know, part of it is in, in the video that you displayed, there is a picture, there's a picture of Alex holding his phone, and then there's a picture of what you see on Alex's phone, but there was a lot going on. So I'm not sure it was quite obvious in a, in a simple space of just holding up my phone to a real environment, and all of a sudden a lot of magic happens. Can you, can yeah. you play that video for the alignment? Yeah, I'll tee it up. And as I'm teeing it up, I'll just give you a bit of background behind it. And so we've got a um, patented piece of technology for aligning any digital twin with any smart device that could be your smartphone or a mixed reality headset. Um, without giving too much away, essentially what it does is just like in um, the outdoor, you have GPS, so general positioning system. This is VPS, so visual 
And so what we're doing is we're looking at the Matterport model um, and aligning that to the physical world. And you have to do a bit of setup as the admin to align certain locations within a property. But the end user, all they do is open up their phone and point their phone to specific locations. And it automatically locks the Matterport model, the digital twin, into the real world. And all we're showing are the matter tags in this instance. I'll show some examples of things like 3D assets, but um, it removes all of the uh, OBJ in the dollhouse. And all we're looking at are the nodes that are exactly where you've placed them in the real world in the digital twin. So the Matterport tour itself. So let me just load up this video here and bring it back to the start where Alex <laughs> talked and, about. And while, while Steven's getting set up, he's going to talk about uh, participating in the captured beta of AR Connect. Again, uh, use the link wgan.info forward slash captured, C-A-P-T-U-R-3-D, the number three D. And that way, when you set up a free account, you'll get six free floor plans and six free site plans from captured. Uh, and uh, so again, Stephen will talk about that beta, but I think first you want to actually show this alignment video. Exactly right. And so before um, I pass it over to Alex again to give this explanation, um, going through the user journey, you've been to the house, you've scanned that property with Matterport, you've uploaded it to your Matterport cloud, um, and you've got that tool processed then back to, you've also placed some tags, um, meta tags within that property in the Matterport account. Um, you've now go to your captured um, account, so captured.io, and you copy your Matterport URL and place it into the AR Connect section. Um, online, what we do is we bring in all the visual information and our system starts um, extracting all of the things that we need to do for alignment. Um, there's a two-step process that we ask you to draw or measure a few different doorways. Um, and what we're doing here is getting an understanding of how big that space is. We're trying to make something very technical, very easy. And then when you go to site, as an admin, you need to set up those alignment points, um, which Alex will take us through in a moment. And then as an end user, you can just get up and play with it. So I'll let Alex talk us through um, this point, but... Um, in the background, we've scanned a house, we've put some tags in, we've uploaded it to Matterport, we've now brought it into Captured. Now we're back on site to do the final part of alignment. If you're watching this, hopefully you've already connected uh, your digital twin through your Captured account. You've created that alignment point within the model in Captured. And now it's just time to visit the physical space and match up that alignment point with the one that we made within the captured platform when you created your digital twin. So what we're gonna do now is open the AR Connect app. If you haven't used it before, then just make sure you allow all permissions um, in terms of sharing your photos and location, et cetera, so that it can locate you in the space. We're gonna open the AR Connect app and find the model that relates to the space that we're in. So we'll click on that. And we're just gonna click on the alignment point that we made in the model. So you can see the exact same door. We're gonna click on that. And we're going to start scanning our space around this alignment point. So just move your phone around. You'll see that the area in your surroundings are being scanned. Try and get all parts of that alignment point and just flesh out. Scan. Perfect. So now that's aligned, what we're going to do is create the same measurement and alignment point that we made in the model within the physical space. So with your thumb, just go from left to right and align that up with the door. In that case, it was 0.73. Perfect. So now that space has been aligned and activated. So while we're on the measurement tool as well, there's a couple of icons in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. So what we can do as well within the model, you can use this in AR to measure specific spaces. So if we want to measure this chair, for example, we can drag our thumb from left to right and get a measurement of that chair and so on and so forth. But now we're going to show you something really awesome, these spatial tags. So these will be the matter tags that you created within your model. Come with me, I'll show you some awesome content. So I'll leave it there because the next part of that video is what we just went through before. But what you saw um, initially there is um, picking up an alignment point. So grabbing visual understanding as an admin, uh, someone setting up the space and then setting up that alignment point by just drawing a simple line. Then any of your customers or end users that come in, all they need to do is open their phone, open the application and away they go.
So uh, for clarification, there's kind of a front end and back end of the captured AR Connect app. The, the back end is saying, okay, I'm a Matterport service provider. My client uh, engaged me to go shoot this house for sale. I've come out and I've done my Matterport tour just like I would normally do. I then send it to Matterport to be processed. I'll get a link from Matterport. I take that link, I go back into Captured, where I've already set up an account, and then I paste that link within the uh, AR Connect section of the Captured Content Management System. Uh, at that point, uh, your back end is going to ask me to take a couple key measurements. So let's say it, it was that environment Alex was doing. I'm measuring the door for the, the height and width of that door as a reference point to help with the alignment. And then Alex went out with the, the captured AR Connect app set in, let's call it the back end feature of it. He took some key measurements of that door, which he did within the back end of the captured content management system in the AR Connect. And now he's got measurements here, measurements here, and it now knows how the magic of how to align the app for when it's looking at something. Am I close? Spot on. Good to hear that you're able to kind of go through that process. I'm trying to pay attention. So, okay. So, but my customer, that my clients, customers, prospective buyers of that house, they too download the AR Connect app mm -hmm. powered by Captured 3D. And they don't have to do any kind of alignment. No, they just open their app looks like a camera looking at that space because it's already aligned somehow magically. Did they have to put in the address of what property they're at? So when I mean, you open the app, it will give you um, the public locations nearest to you. Um, but because it's a, a augmented reality experience, we've actually narrowed that down to a 50 meter radius. And so um, there'll be one selection usually that you would click on for that property. Um, and then it's gonna ask you to open up the camera. That's the permissions that uh, Alex was talking about. Um, and so once that camera is open, we're collecting visual information to understand where you are within that property. Um, and then you will get an AOK -okay to go explore and um, go look at the tags or any assets. So is, is there a GPS involved here in order to figure out, ah, this is where Dan is. There's this house that he's walked into and must be the right place, but we'll have a little dialogue in the app to, to say, is this the model that you're in? So I need to know I'm in 123 Main Street. Yeah, that's correct. I hit that, accept that. There may be some permissions I need to do for using the using the app, the camera, the property, whatever, something mm -hmm. like that. That's and correct. At that point, I am now walking through the space and it's, it's almost like magical things happen. So I'm, I'm looking at the refrigerator and it's telling me, there's a video to tell me about this sub-zero re refrigerator and the, and the magic of that. And I get to the I get to the dishwasher and all of a sudden the, the, the plans for that dishwasher appear. So I don't even have to keep, if I buy the house, I don't have to keep the manual because the manual is actually available with that appliance. And maybe there's, I don't know, am, am I reading too much into this? There's an explosion picture of that dishwasher <laughs> show me all the parts or conceivably that might not be for the consumer application, but for the, for the, uh, uh, the, the Maytag service technician that, that hardly ever comes out to fix anything because Maytag never breaks, then the, the technician could be looking at an augmented reality model of that dishwasher exploded to look at where all the different parts are. Or even as a consumer, I might say, oh, my, the, the tray in my dishwasher has failed. I wonder what part that is. So, uh, I, maybe I'm getting way ahead of myself. So if we, if we stick back with that, just the house is for sale and maybe the, the agent pops up and is telling me about the house that I'm in or I'm looking at the, I'm in the living room and I'm thinking about, well, is our furniture going to fit? 
So I can use the app to literally measure the living room. Mm -hmm. Or I have a floor plan. The agent gave me a floor plan, but it, it didn't have the measurement I needed for whatever it was that I was thinking about for that space. Hypothetically, will my fridge fit in this cavity? Um, and so you can quickly measure that cavity in augmented reality to get that information. And I think what you were talking about before with the maintenance uh, scheduling and um, appreciation, it's actually where uh, our initial uh, goals were. And so working with facility managers of skyscrapers and being able to have um, each floor scanned and have this information, be able to move to things and get that information. Um, tags. Oh, yeah. and, you know, when you start talking about facilities manager, I kind of think, well, oh my God, there must be a thousand different manuals for all the different things inside a mechanical, electrical, plumbing facility. And then there's all the kinds of dials. And I, you know, I'm just thinking, well, <clears throat> you've taken possession of this facility and there, there must be a, a truckload of documents. And somehow, some way, John has kept track of the file cabinet where the documents are. So when a piece of equipment <laughs> fails, but it's like, really, well, that seems like so 2020, you, you really want to, you, you, you really want to be able to just have the space totally augmented with all the documents and, and, and maybe the, even the, the China marker where I would normally, I might indicate to say, <clears throat> oh, um, Alvin came out and repaired the HVAC unit on June 1st, 2020. Uh, okay, well, where did I, okay, maybe I wrote that on the unit, but maybe the facilities manager is actually in a different state and can't actually walk up to that cabinet to see the last time it was serviced. Mm. So yeah. now you have an augmented experience. Oh, Alvin came out on June 1st, and that was the last time he serviced this unit. Yeah, we've been working with a number of um, facility, large facility management um, companies in making sure it works um, just as way well as it's intended, like you've mentioned. The key part for them is security. And so um, we've got some security pro protocols within the tags as well for two-factor um, two authentication. Uh, where I'm really excited to see this take place, um, and we saw a pretty big uptake within uh, last year with the COVID restrictions, is within museums and art galleries. And so how many times you've been walking through a space and be like, well, oh, I wish I could just learn more about this artist or I want to know more about this individual piece. And so being able to provide that um, within a infrastructure-free environment and so bluetooth beacons have been a while around for a while within museums and galleries but they're expensive and hard to maintain because of the hardware this requires no hardware and each user can get access to this application um, on their own device and so it's byod which the world is moving towards so bring your own device um, to ensure that there isn't any um unnecessary touching of um, assets and things like that and so we're really excited about it in that forum as well um so if and, I go scan a museum and then I have all these works of arts and then I have aligned the space uh, when the, the visitor to the gallery holds it up in, in front of the Mona Lisa, uh, then it, it knows that that's the Mona Lisa and the, I have my earbuds in on my iPhone and all of a sudden the curator is, is telling me the story about, and I didn't have to rent uh, the, the device that I wonder whether it's been sterilized or not uh, mm. and maybe get training on how to use it or something. I literally can bring my own device and I don't even need a QR code up on the wall to tell me I just need to just aim it at the picture and, and, and get a story. That's it. So, wow. So there's so many use cases for this. Could, could you take us through the use cases of, well, e even before we, Let's talk timing. You're, you're uh, captured still at beta. Is this correct? Uh, um, AR Connect is in beta, but it is publicly available. The only thing that isn't publicly available, the apps aren't on the app store. Um, and so if anyone that's used a um, Matterport, for instance, their beta app of the capture app, you have to go through test flight on um, Apple products. And so the application's currently in test flight. The reason for this is um, we're making some last minute updates and things before we push to the app store, which has a lot of curation and um, review from the Apple team. Um, but that will be going live uh, within the next few weeks, uh, which is what we're going for. And the same thing with Google store. Um, and then, so that's the only thing that isn't live at the moment. And so it's a great place right now to pick up the experience, start testing it, potentially try your own office, your own home, push the limits of what's currently possible. Um, and then when it becomes available within the next few weeks in public app stores, it's going to be the perfect time for you to start uh, talking to customers about selling this into as a potential opportunity. Okay, there's a lot going on there. 
Today is Thursday, February 25th, 2021. Mm -hmm. Unless you're in Australia, where it's Friday, February 26th, 2021. Sometime in April 2021, you anticipate going live in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store with an app that you would be able to search for AR Connect, the letters A-R-C, A-R Connect, all one word. Uh, presumably the developer would say captured, C-A-P-T-U-R-3-D. Uh, there are other things in the App Store, for example, that sound like AR Connect, but they're not because it hasn't been released yet. So, uh, uh, so again, today, Thursday, February 25th, 2021, if you're thinking about taking captured AR Connect augmented reality spin for a test drive, it's available today through the test flight app. So I, I think what I would say again is if, if you wanna go do the test flight of the AR Connect app, go to the captured website using wgan.info forward slash captured, C-A-P-T-U-R-3-D, get your six free floor plans and six free site plans as a result, sign up for a free captured account. Then on the captured website, click on the AR Connect uh, link, go to that page, and then you'll see probably a button that says, uh, would you like to participate in our beta? Click on that link and it'll explain uh, how to sign up for test flight uh, to get that app on your phone and what the next steps are to participate. So th is this a private beta or a public beta? This is a... This is in public beta um, public currently. Beta. So you beta. can automatically get access when you sign up to Captured, um, but there are some roadblocks in terms of making it completely public for your customers to use out of it at the moment. So um, right now we would consider this a testing stage um, for you to get comfortable with the technology and for you to provide feedback that we're constantly evolving on as well. Great, and figure sometime in April be public and any, anyone could go to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, download the AR Connect app powered by Captured. And uh, it's probably too soon to ask you about money, but is, is this a free service? Is this something that will be charged for? So it's going to be free for the time being. Um, the reason being is we understand the adoption rate for this technology is in its infancy um, globally. And what we want to see and where we would see the most amount of um, benefit is making people's uh, or creating value for people and making sure that the actual technology is being used. We don't want to have blockades in place that will hinder people from trying it to begin with and seeing the true value. So for the um, foreseeable future, it will be a free application um, for most part of this year. This is awesome. Okay, Stephen, could you start with perhaps a timeline of what augmented reality experiences are available today with AR Connect via test flight. Mm -hmm. What's coming soon, maybe March, 2021. What's coming after that, perhaps April through the end of the year. And then give us the blue sky of what's possible on your roadmap, but you're, you, you just don't have a time frame on. Does that work for you? Sounds great. Um, okay, I'll try and so do. The, I was just going to say I'll try and do this slowly because there is a lot um, that is happening. So right now, currently available in the beta, if you were to try AR Connect, um, you would be able to visualize anything from your Matter tag, um, and so that would be an image, a video, audio, um, even a URL link, and the URL link will be presented as an actual website in the tag. So it won't take you out of the app, but you'll see the website within the tag itself. Uh, in addition to this, we have the measurement tool, which is um, instantly available. Oh, it went a little bit fast for me. So let's we'll just stay with that. So yep. if, if, if I go into Matterport Workshop and I create Matter tags, mm -hmm. photo, video, audio, website, that includes shopping. So I could literally have a, a, a buy now button within the Matterport space in an augmented reality experience. Correct. So in, in theory, I'm not sure why I'd want to do that, but I could, I could walk the aisles of the store and I could actually be buying stuff, just holding up my app and, and have it all shipped to me. We've done some trials um, with that, with a furniture store, um, just locally here in Melbourne. Uh, and what the, 
the use case here is how can I add all these items to my cart in augmented reality? And then you go to the checkout and you have that service there and then you end up packaging it up and it gets shipped towards you. Um, and so that's a really good use case for it. And also when you've got the asset, let's say it's, um, oh, sorry, retail store, let's say it's a couch and it's a brown couch. When you click on the tag, because that's the brown couch, but here's what the black, blue, pink, and red couch look like. Would you like to add one of those to the cart? Um, and so it's a nice little, um, again, BYOD, uh, friendly, COVID-friendly retail experience as well. Okay, so we're actually talking about kind of like COVID and post-COVID. So mm. in a COVID world, we're really talking about going to a Matterport space on a mm. desktop, laptop, smartphone, tablet, and being able to experience a space virtually. Mm -hmm. At some point, the world will open up and we will go to physical places. And at that point, all the things that we've created in terms of matter tags, audio, video, shopping, website, whatever it is that I can do with the matter tag today will be available through augmented reality in the AR Connect app powered by Captured. Correct. Awesome. Okay. That's available today. Second, you started to talk about measurements. So currently available um, in the app is AR measurements. And so there's a lot of AR measuring apps out there, um, whether it be with AR Kit or AR Core, Google and Apple. Um, we've brought that technology with into the application. Um, we were discussing previously some ideas or reasons why measuring a certain area within a house to see if your fridge may fit within the cavity or would your couch fit through this doorway to get it in? Or maybe would a machinery um, be able to fit through a certain location within a commercial property? Um, that's all available right now um, within the application. And the last part is the share uh, capability. So photos and videos, whether you want to share them to your social networks or potentially your partner that couldn't come to the property or um, anyone else, um, a colleague or something that you want to share that information with, really simple share functionality. That's all available today, um, right now, if you jump on the app. And that also includes the, the take snapshots. Yes, snapshots and videos. And so the advantage of taking a snapshot in augmented reality is I, I might create the measurement and now I want to take a picture of the measurement. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, and then you available to today. You. Anything else yep. available today, 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 Thursday, February 25th? That's where we're at today. Um, and obviously the website view is the big one there. Um, so that gives you the capabilities to do IoT technically if you put a website IoT in that tag or a retail experience that we discussed. Okay, well, that's interesting. So let's talk about Internet of Things. And is there anything dynamic about the Internet of Things today? Today, it's limited to the website that you're displaying. So for anyone that has experience with IoT, um, you will have a dashboard online. Um, connecting up all the information into a, a dashboard of where your data sits and what you're looking at. It might be your thermometer, it might be the water gauge or a bunch of different things. Um, because we can visualize the website in augmented reality, you can put that URL uh, into a tag and we'll visualize it in AR. And so you could click on the thermometer and see the information from that tag. It is going to be built out a lot more robust in the future, but right now there is capabilities there to present that data. So if we, let, let's switch gears and say we were in a commercial space and then we were in the mechanical engineering, plumbing area with all these heavy pieces of equipment, many of which have gauges on them. If the company today has a dashboard for virtually, for remotely reading those uh, uh, files, then um, then th as long as that ends up on a website somewhere, that could be a matter tag to label the temperature, the water pressure, the oil pressure, the other things that might be important in that space. So now you have mashed up uh, a spatial understanding, a, a way to visualize the space along with the the, the the things that measure, the, the, the dynamic measuring. I'm gonna guess those aren't perfect because it's not quite doing a API feed to that actual device. But if you could put it in a, in a matter tag that has a website for that reading, then you could still accomplish this. Yeah, exactly right. If that website's connected to the API for the I, I, IoT, I know there's a lot of acronyms there and I apologize, um, it would show the live reading. 
Yeah, but I, I, I'm guessing at some point down the road, you would be able to take an API from a company that's got all this data and, and not go through an intermediary step of a website, literally just be able to somehow uh, ha have the real time temperature pressure show up on that virtual valve. On that dial, yeah, correct. And um, it would be part of the roadmap that we can discuss in a, a little bit, in okay. probably a couple months from now. Okay, so IoT, uh, what's next? What's coming maybe in, in March or April? So in March, when the experience goes live, um, the key feature that we're going live with and what is um, we're waiting on, I might show a quick video of it because I've prepared something. Let me just load it up as I speak about it. Um, but it connects everything that we've been speaking about today um, into one thing. So I'm just loading this as we speak, but um, it comes back to that virtual staging. And so we're virtually staged something online. Um, and that's really great if you're away from that uh, property, but now you've gone to the house um, and it's still completely empty because you've got virtually staged furniture. Um, if you were to use AR Connect, you can look through that application at the furniture of where it was placed in the Matterport tour. Um, the example that I've got here was just one of our developers um, having a play yesterday in their front yard. So apologies for the cruelty, but the point here is it's the first time this has ever been shown online. And so it's a really good opportunity um, for me to share this with World you all. World Premiere WGAN TV live at five. So in this instance, um, uh, our developer has a scan of their whole property, including the driveway. Um, the reason why they've done it out there is because it was nice and spacious for them to create the video. They've placed this furniture in the virtual staging engine, which we went through earlier today uh, by clicking on the asset and placing it right in there. We've got a table, a couple of chairs and a stand. Um, and then using AR Connect, he's aligned um, his space. And now um, as I click play, you can see those 3D assets in situ. Um, whilst this is on a driveway, you could imagine this being in the dining room as you're walking through the property and being able to see this information. The assets come through great through mobile rendering okay. as well. So, so there's a lot going on here. Let's, let's break it down while you're looking at this. So uh, now, once again, if we were looking, uh, so if, if we were just walking on this driveway, which is simulation for a dining room. Uh, so let's imagine we were, let, let's imagine we were walking through and a dining room that was empty and there was no furniture. We held up our AR Connect app. If we virtually, if we did the do-it-yourself virtual staging of a Matterport space of that dining room for that, that property, then when we hold up our phone or our tablet, we would actually see the virtually staged space that we're standing in that's presently empty. That's correct. Um, and so that's, Again, bringing down those costs that we were talking about before for actually physically staging it, doing it um, digitally. Uh, at the moment, it's just going to be one way. So you're only going to be able to view these assets to begin with. In the future, you will be able to move them. But right now, you can just see how it's been placed. Um, and then, yes, going back to that measurement tool, you can start measuring the rooms and everything around it. Obviously, turning it on and off as well. But we're really excited about this. And this is our focus as the next big feature, which will be coming out in with the release of the app into the app stores. Um, and so you can expect all of this. And the best part about Captured is we're connecting all of our pieces together. So it's not siloed. If you want to create um, something, it can be siloed, but it also connects to everything else that we're doing and creating a, um, an amazing experience for the end user without them even realizing it. They've got a virtually staged uh, digital experience and now an augmented reality experience. Put this into context and I'll stop sharing. Um, experience like that, uh, an augmented reality experience like that till recently at a minimum would cost twenty, thirty thousand dollars for someone to create. Um, and so the value in which this is now bringing into the Matterport environment is huge um, because you can start doing these for a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars, whatever it is that you choose to sell them for. Awesome. Uh, what, what else, anything else else coming out March, April? So that's March, which I've just shown you um, virtual staging um, in April. Uh, there's two things that we will be releasing uh, the first one, quite simply, is custom tags. And so you would have seen in the previous video, the tag is a glowing orb. Um, we're going to be providing the ability to completely customize the tag. That's actually a feature that's going to be connected to Captured as well. So you'll be able to customize your tags in the virtual tour um, using different icons and colors and backgrounds. Um, and that's going to be translated into AR Connect. Quite simple uh, for that one, but it's, an, it's a nice, robust feature. The big one in April, um, and you would have seen a, a quick preview of it before in the coming soon video, is AR Wayfinding. Um, and so AR Wayfinding within uh, 
interior spaces and also depending on where the Matterport tours connect. Um, it's a really exciting one for us. There's going to be a number of different ways that we're going to be able to do this. Uh, I don't want to give away too many of our secrets, but we found a really efficient way to create paths within spaces and have that really accurate as well. Um, the use case that I bring it back to all the time and people connect with it is you're in a shopping center, a retail shopping center, and you're looking at that signboard that says you are here and you have no idea where you are. We're trying to help solve that problem. So you could be looking at that signboard that's saying you are here, pull your phone up and go, okay, I want to go to um, a sports store. And then it's going to give you the path on the road directly there and the shortest path to get there. Um, and that's all coming in April. We're really we're super excited about that one as well. Um, we've been speaking about it for a long time. Um, it's taken a long time to develop because it is quite unique. Uh, we've actually been working really closely with Google's um, development team in assistance with this. We've got a really good partnership. Um, and something that I should mention as well, I'd like to thank all of the developers at Matterport for making a lot of this possible. Um, I haven't given them one shout out today, but all of this um, would not be possible with the great help that Matterport have done with their API and SDK and opening that up. Um, and our developers working alongside theirs have been uh, fantastic as well. Awesome. Uh, uh, earlier in the show, you talked about museums. So I just imagine that the, the, the number of use cases for for uh, wayfinding is just off the, uh, the the scale, yeah. Pretty much everything we've discussed within the augmented reality or AR Connect um, will be um, more useful with wayfinding. So we're talking about facility management. There's a problem with this pipe. All right, let's wayfind to that pipe so I don't get lost through the building. Um, in museums, I want to go see the Mona Lisa. How do I get there in the quickest path? Wayfinding to that and getting more information on it. Um, it's just going to hopefully help all of these experiences be a little bit more efficient. Um, and then that comes back to our three key principles that we we're talking about before being delightful, being reliable and making sure it works every single time. And that's why we're kind of holding off, making sure the testing's there before we release, but that's coming in April um, this year. Uh, a couple of things that are beyond that. Um, uh, the next ones we talked about IoT, um, like you just mentioned before, that's gonna be coming most likely in May, June, where you can connect directly into an API, pick a, an anamographic, to represent your dials and have that place within the space itself. We're really excited about that one. Um, and then later within June is BIM integration. And so we discussed this really briefly before, but overlaying a BIM with metadata, both in the digital world, within the virtual staging engine, and then bringing that into the AR Connect. And so you can see it on site, go to that wall and see exactly where those pipes lie behind that wall. Um, we've got accuracy to less than half a centimeter, which gives you certainty that what you're looking at is correct as well, which we're really excited about. Um, so that's crazy. Again, I, I could be standing in the building, the ceiling is leaking or there's water someplace and I'm trying to figure out where are the pipes, where are the valves, where's, where, where might be the best place to figure out where something's leaking. I'm now looking at a, a BIM model uh, to help me f find what's behind the drywall. Exactly right. Or is what you were talking about in the life cycle of a, of a commercial space, and, and maybe we're at the renovation stage. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we have a Matterport space to create the as-built. The, the architect has now designed the space, uh, and now we're taking a look at the BIM model within the space, uh, and we might be doing weekly construction documentation to keep looking at how is the BIM compared to the actual construction? And are we doing any clash detection? Are we finding conflicts between trades? Uh, is the, is the, is the, is the, what, the trade that's doing the framing uh, doing what they're supposed to do? Otherwise, it's going to create a problem for the plumbing or the, the heating or electrical. And all of a sudden, there's a, a clash. So Hopefully it sounds like this will be a, a way to visually tell it, it, it kind of in a, in, a, in a way that kind of just logically makes sense without thinking about it. It's just like this magic. Well, you just, um, I'm looking at my empty space, but I hold up my augmented reality uh, AR Connect app and uh, my BIM models overlaid and I can now see, oh gosh, uh, if, if we, we need to stop construction right now and fix a problem, otherwise it's going to cost us tens of thousands of dollars if we go to the next phase and then realize that, oh, it, that piece of equipment is not going to fit. Uh, somebody poured the cement too small or whatever it was, you know, so uh, now you can actually see the BIM to reality. This right. is crazy. You can see the BIM within reality with an augmented reality app. That's a lot to get your head around. 
It All is. Right. And then the next stage from that um, to make it even easier is when you're on construction sites, you need both your hands is actually seeing that within a mixed reality headset. So HoloLens or Magic Leap. And so that is the natural progression. Um, so we're talking about that's the, the near future roadmap through till about June, July with that BIM. Um, after that, the some of the blue sky areas that we're focusing on um, is testing within mixed reality headsets and making sure that it all works within that so you can have hands-free within these environments. Uh, but the biggest one, and we understand and appreciate this is gonna be probably some of the most valuable um, updates to the experience, but having it white labeled. Um, and so it's no longer gonna be AR Connect app. It's gonna be your company name or your client's company name application. Uh, there are a lot of technical uh, difficulties to overcome before we can get to that uh, in terms of pushing apps to the app store and a bunch of other things. But that is our blue sky goal. And we will be working on it at the end of this year to make sure that it becomes a reality because it's going to be a lot more valuable for Ikea to have an Ikea AR app or um, a museum to have their museums AR app rather than an AR connect one. And for that, you'll be able to sell it at a lot higher price because they've got a customized app um, more than anything else, which is automated all the way through your Matterport tour. Does it become a feature if we were talking about ikea for example would mm. it be a dedicated ikea augmented reality app or no no it's the ikea app and one of the features within the ikea app is the augmented reality feature powered by captured white labeled we have no idea that that was done by capture it just looks like it's seamlessly integrated into ikea I'm not saying that ikea is, is an actual use case or client but just for the purpose of this conversation mm. am i close so the the end goal is yes and where that's going to become possible is within WebXR. and so um currently the app is built on a game engine called unity and so unity struggles quite a lot to plug into other applications or other native applications so it would need to be its own ikea ar application like in-store ar experience but it's completely branded by them um we take a back seat all we're doing is driving all of the technology within it in the future and what we've been working on uh within the studio side of our um Fourier business is web XR. So web um, AR and web VR are enabling um, immersive experiences to run through web browsers. It's uh, become very, very powerful in the um, recent times where we've been able to push through 45 minute animation documentaries through web XR. Um, and so when that becomes possible to do our alignment processes and everything in it, no longer will we need an app we'll be able to run it through web and then that can be hosted on different people's apps or on their websites. Um, and that's much more of the blue sky within the two year side of things. Uh, two questions from that. One, uh, uh, is there any limitation on which generation smartphone you have, either iPhone or Android? It's a good question. Um, the more recent phones are obviously more powerful and are gonna have better alignment and more reliability. Um, uh, our testers, go back to all the way through to, I believe iPhone seven or eight. Um, it works efficiently, like really efficiently. Um, prior to that, it just, it, it, the processing power just isn't in the smartphones. But let me ask it a little differently. If I bought a phone within the last two years, iPhone or Android, is it safe to say probably AR Connect would work? Absolutely. Um, I think you could go even, back as far as four years. And four years. Uh, that would be amazing. Because I, I would say on average, people are typically replacing their phones every two years. So mm -hmm. for may, maybe an oversimplification, the short answer is if, if you have a smartphone from the last four years, it's going to work with AR Connect. Correct. Okay. So you went through all these different uh, use cases today tomorrow and a little bit further in the distance, um, gosh, my head's spinning. I just imagine that almost every day, week or month that you've been working on this, companies come to you and, and are presenting use cases that you're, you all have never even thought of, but are spot on. Is that happening? Yeah, and it, it's helped drive a lot of our development. Um, we consider ourselves experts within the immersive technology space. Um, we do not consider ourselves experts within facility management or real estate or engineering, uh, but we have some fantastic partners and clients that are experts in that area. Um, and so previously we had 
developed out projects, as I said, to understand this technology. Now, the really good part is the feedback from our customers that are in the beta program um, that are potentially doing uh, renovation businesses. And they're like, well, I need this feature or that feature, things that we had never even thought of. Um, they're actually quite easy for us to implement. And so we can bring that into our development roadmap and provide them with that solution. Um, at the end of the day, and I say this all the time when I speak about both virtual staging and AR Connect, uh, we're building these tools for people to make money off. So let us know how you can make uh, money and if we don't have that feature, we will build it um, because at the end of the day, it's probably going to benefit not just yourself, but a lot of other people within the community itself. Yeah, I, I, I think that's an awesome point to make because uh, I would imagine our WGAN TV viewers, uh, every one of them have a different perspective of to say, oh, I could see how I could offer an add-on that I could charge more money for or deliver more value to make my clients sticky from somebody else that might, I mean, an ex example would be, oh, there's, you know, there's a lot of Matterport service providers in Atlanta or New York. How do I differentiate myself from even others, those who were perhaps early on adopters of technology like uh, do-it-yourself virtual staging, uh, powered by captured uh, augmented reality of Matterport spaces, uh, uh, powered by uh, uh, captures, captures uh, AR Connect, are it's just an opportunity to differentiate yourself from yet another Matterport service provider uh, that may be offering it at no charge, just as a value add, or that there are actually opportunities, even if it's free to, to us, to be able to charge our client uh, an add-on that involves augmented reality. And then I, I hear what you're saying is technology, you know, as, as, as much as we look at this and we go, well, of course, let's go do this tomorrow. This is obvious. Everybody should be doing this. Technology takes a long time for adoption. So maybe even we have to still say, let's do this at no charge to our, for our clients. So our clients can still provide this and be learning about how best to use augmented reality to see, you know, how, how does everybody make money with this? So exactly anyway, I, 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 you know, I, I, I said this re regarding uh, captured DYI virtual staging of Matterport spaces. I got to say this, you know, again, about um, uh, uh, augmented reality powered by captured 3D's AR Connect. Wow. This is really awesome in terms of how much value that it adds to the entire Matterport ecosystem. Uh, I think even for Matterport service providers that may be competing on price with other platforms of shooting the same space, now have a way to differentiate themselves, both maybe from other Matterport service providers, but certainly differentiate themselves from yet other platforms that last count, I believe the list that we curate is that there are 170 3D, 360 virtual tour hosting platforms and software. And certainly Matterport is among the Goliaths in the space. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of other platforms kind of kicking at their heels. And this is yet another way to differentiate Matterport from e everyone else. So, uh, uh, I, gee, I should ask you this question because like you, you realize how much value you're adding. You're, I mean, you just must be bouncing off the walls with excitement of, of what these two things that you've sh showed us today uh, add value to Matterport. We are super excited about it. Um, it's come the same way that a lot of the features that we've developed um, in the same vein that we've built them for ourselves uh, originally and now we're opening them up to the market. Um, our developers get the most amount of um, joy out of seeing random people, random customers, random clients using the technology that they've built um, in really in intuitive ways. And so now that we're finally getting these out into the public outside of our four walls, um, or everyone's four walls because everyone's been at home, um, we're really excited to see this get picked up and start trialing it and getting feedback. Um, and so it's a really exciting time for us at the moment. Sign up for a, a, a test flight and, and, and take uh, augmented reality for a spin with your Matterport tours. Uh, uh, spaces for your clients. Um, again, go to wgan.info forward slash captured 
C-A-P-T-U-R-3-D. Using our affiliate link, you'll end up getting six free captured floor plans, six free captured uh, site plans. Sign up for a free captured account, then go to the AR Connect link and then follow the links to, uh, to learn about how to sign up for test flight and, uh, and uh, get hooked up with the AR Connect app through test flight uh, using uh, iOS platform. I, I have to ask you, Stephen, um, you know, Matterport announced on October 8th that they were going public mm -hmm. via Gore's Holding 6 in a deal valued at nearly $3 billion by the end of second quarter of 2021. And assuming that actually happens, that Matterport would get $615 million in cash in order to power innovation, research and development and scaling Matterport in verticals and, and across the globe. Any thoughts on how that windfall of cash that Matterport's going to have to power scaling Matterport Hmm. What does that mean to, to captured? Uh, it's a good question. It'd be foolish for me to say that it hasn't been something that we've discussed here internally. I think at the end of the day, it's going to be a really beneficial thing to the community. Um, we've been around and uh, as with you from the start uh, of the journey with Matterport and a lot of the decisions that were made um, were to get to this point, to allow them to do an IPO. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot more freedom and you're seeing that now already with the APIs and SDKs and making that accessible. Um, and there's more announcements to come in the near future with their marketplaces and a few other things that they're going to be working on. I think that available cash is going to be quite um, useful from their point of view in terms of the marketing exercises that they can run, uh, potentially the investment into certain aspects of their own technology, uh, be it the mobile capture or the Pro 3, uh, whenever it is, it will be released um, and some of the software sides. Uh, understandably within the question you're trying to get to around uh, um, investment within um, software such as ours or potential acquisitions. I think there are pathways for that in the long term. Um, I wouldn't say in the short term that is something that we would uh, look at. And I don't think it would be something that Matterport would look at, but I think where the value would be provided is within the support networks, um, which we're seeing now with their developers um, out of their API and SDK sectors, being able to provide that support to companies like us to build amazing tool sets. And I think down the road, once a lot of these features have got, communities behind them and have a lot of um, value. And so right now we're in that beta stage and trying to start it. We're talking about providing things for free because we want to adopt the technology. I think once it has been adopted and you've got that traction, uh, I think some, some of those discussions down the road could be a possibility. Um, but you never know with um, IPO companies uh, what their strategy is and it's just all speculation. Well, certainly one of the, the ways that companies scale is through acquisition and uh not going to put you on the spot and ask you, you know, what they, uh, you know, you're going to, you're going to do a deal with Matterport, but I, man, it was me and I got $615 million and I'm watching this show and going, oh my gosh, captured 3D in Melbourne, Australia is adding huge value to the Matterport ecosystem. I mean, this is like so big. Uh, that it's it's beyond words, and it uh, seems like they might want to, you know, tie you up and uh, uh, acquire your company. So I'm just, just saying, so please remember me when you're rich and famous. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, I mean, I just can't imagine that that's not on Matterport's mind is to say, okay, what, what companies in our space are adding huge value to the Matterport ecosystem. And you just went through two major announcements, essentially, in terms of uh, augmented reality meets Matterport and uh, DYI virtual staging meets Matterport. And it certainly checks the box in every vertical around the country and in, in, in virtually every space. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's mind boggling. So, uh, uh, it, interesting times ahead. I, 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 I hope uh, if, they, if they don't throw a ton of money 
uh, at Foria to acquire your company, at, at least they figure out how to put a lot of cash behind you to enable you all to scale quickly with more of whatever it is you need to build out your platform in, in essentially to help Matterport, so. He's hoping. Anything you wanna say? No, um, thank you for all the hard work that you do in this community and for having me on again. Uh, it's always a, a pleasure to come and speak about all the things that we've, um, we've got on here. I think um, it'd be good to pick your brain on a bunch of other things, potentially offline, but it's really good to have us. So thank you. Thank you. Is there something else you wanted to talk about today? We're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about pricing at all and anything or uh, there, different. There are some, yeah, there are some pricing updates. I know we've been talking for a while. Um, we'll be able to provide more information on this when it comes um, becomes more public. But we're changing our pricing system um, at the moment. It is quite fixed, and so are the subscriptions that you have to buy everything as part of the subscriptions. Um, where it's implementing a credit system. And so you can buy the credits in your local currency. The more credits that you buy, the more discount that you get on those credits, really simple. And so it's in your currency um, and then you get discounts on the credits rather than these packs that we had previously and you can use them for whatever you like. So rather than having to use everything on every property, you could just buy a bunch of credits to um, just use floor plans or just use photo retouching, for instance. Uh, and that will be coming in the next month or so. Awesome. Is, any, any plans to change the booking platform, it's presently free. The captured booking platform is free for bookings. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, free. it's free for scheduling. Um, if you connect payments to it, there is a payment transaction fee and that's because of Stripe. So Stripe um, takes a percentage of the transactions and that's our secure gateway. And to be honest, you want to pay for security in payments and Stripe's one of the best in the world of doing it. And so it is still free. Um, you will pay, a, I think it's 1.5%. I do know it's 1.5% of the total revenue piece. That money's then held in escrow before it is paid out on the delivery side. But um, there's always updates happening in that booking form. We have heaps of customers making some amazing feedback pieces for it. And um, we've been improving it constantly. Awesome. Anything else? Um, our DNS rerouting. Actually, that was the one part that I did want to discuss with you, our white labeling. We discussed it with AR Connect. Um, but in the next couple of weeks, for free and automatically you'll be able to reroute your URLs through your own domain. So currently it's um, company name dot captured, um, take ourselves out of the equation altogether and it's all gonna be hosted through your domain. There is a little bit that you need to do, do on your end. Um, if you have a developer that works with you or you know how to work with a DNS, um, it's quite simple, but we have all the, um, all of the support articles to assist in that process. Um, and then it's all hosted through your site. You get all the SEO benefit. And even in that URL, it just looks nice because it's your domain. Uh, I, we could probably do a whole show on that topic because th that in itself is, is big news. It, you know, it, it's probably, you know, we, it's like, we're, we're it, it's big news. So uh, if, you're, if you're thinking, if you do single property websites, and you want the website to be your company name dot forward slash one, two, three main street is an example. That's what Stephen has just told us uh, is, is now possible. Now possible on request. It's gonna be um, completely automated within the next two weeks um, and it's completely free. Yeah, so th this is really a, a super big deal. Uh, and I, I'm also going to guess, Stephen, by doing that, the, the, the SEO is going back to the photographer or company, perhaps rather than to, to, to captured. That's correct. Um, so I, and so, just do a, I'm sorry. There you go. There you go. Well, just, just do a little quick math here. So if you're a Matterport service provider in each of your models, uh, you get 500 views and you've done 100, view, 100 models in the year, that's... 500 times 100, if I've done my math right, that's 50,000 views that's counting towards your SEO by taking advantage of the uh, captured ability to rewrite the, the DNS, uh, I, I don't make it jargon. So essentially you, you get the URL to look pretty. It's what you want with your website's name forward slash whatever you want to call the tour. And the second benefit you get out of that is the, is the SEO, SEO or the link juice of essentially all your models counting for um, hits on your website in order to push you up in search. 
So, you know, you may have a, a number of competitors in, in, in this, in the space and you're all want to be the, you know, when somebody Googles uh, Matterport Atlanta photographer, you want to be the, the first Matterport service provider that shows up at the very top. You can buy that position through a Google ad, or you can be a very prolific photographer pushing your models through uh, captured to create your single property websites, branded and unbranded. And then, you know, voila, without paying anything, you could conceivably end up at the top, except for those that are buying the ads. Is that, is that kind of a spot on? Spot on. So that's really important. So before we, before we disappear here, Stephen, I, I just want to say, you know, uh, uh, if, 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 uh, if you all have been, you know, we've been, we've been talking for almost two and a half hours, but I think everything that Stephen has had to say today has been like so important. It's been worth sticking here. Uh, and if you've only come to the show to learn about captured, uh, uh, uh do it yourself, uh, virtual staging, um, of a Matterport space powered by captured, or you, if you come to the show today to learn about, augmented reality mashed up with Matterport ca uh, powered by Captured's, uh, Captured's uh, AR Connect app. Uh, the, the piece to know here is there's so many other things of this Swiss Army knife platform of Captured, in, including three the, the overlay or skin view that he talked about at the top of the show, the single property websites branded and unbranded, the, the delivery of content uh, the, the floor plans, which are awesome, both floor plans and site plans, both 2D and 3D. Uh, the fact that when you, when you can have a captured person curate your Matterport space so you can get rid of the extraneous scans, have the highlight reel created, pull out the 2D images, then you can have those images or your DSLR images photo retouched uh, without even leaving the platform. Uh, the booking service, booking and scheduling, which is like crazy in itself in terms of efficiency. And as soon as you get two photographers, you'll, kn you'll know what we mean here of why it's really important to have a scheduling platform built around Matterport and, and real estate photographers. The analytics of that's like Matterport analytics on steroids squared because it's really over the top and, and including the reports that get delivered um, uh, so there, there's just so much to the captured platform that's really awesome, you know, uh, even before there was augmented reality, even before there was, there was DYI virtual staging. So like, congrats, I don't know how you get any sleep. I mean, you're like, this is like so amazing. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, it's helped everyone working from home. The sleep hasn't happened much in the last few months, but we're getting to the point now where the everyone's getting a good break and uh, getting these uh, features out into the public. So it's been good. Stephen, thank you for being on the show today. Likewise, thank you for having me and looking forward to the next one. You bet. Uh, we've been visiting with Stephen Kunis. Stephen is Foria co-founder and chief operating officer. Uh, Foria is the parent company of Captured and uh, has other businesses like as the authorized reseller of the Matterport camera uh, in Australia and New, New Zealand. So, and, and doing some amazing other businesses that you, you talked about in terms of uh, technology. So for Stephen in Melbourne, Australia, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN-TV Live at five.